New Always Talking Shit Show. You're what's good, what's good. It's your boy Doc On. It's your boy King Magic. We're back in tune with another episode of the Always, Always Talking, Talking Shit Show. <laughs> I think Melinda Gates is out here high siding. I just seen it on the Breakfast Club. I ain't really go deep into it, right? But allegedly, I think she's sitting with Diane Sawyer or somebody like that. One of them, one of them types. She, I think. Let me just say what she said. She said that she has nightmares because her hus- former husband, Bill Gates. Who had to pay her six point eight something million billion dollars uh, in a divorce settlement? She said that Bill took some meetings with Jeffrey Epstein, now now allegedly deceased Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein, um, against her sort of discretion. Like she said that you know how women would tell you sometimes like I don't feel I don't feel right about him. Now, me personally, I know I have learned that you should kind of pay attention to that. But, you know, he took the meeting. She said she has nightmares. She had nightmares because of it. So she can imagine what all those women felt. Now, I don't, how do I say this? She lying. (laughs) <laughs> Bro you really believe she had nightmares She's a billionaire You know the security That billions of dollars bring Right What was she having nightmares for Was she having nightmares that her husband might be caught up in some of that shit mm-hmm. Cause she knows he She knows he, she knows him Allegedly he cheated with multiple women You know like she knows that so She think Bill maybe she, Maybe she think Bill a freak Maybe she know Bill to be a little freaky and she like, oh my gosh. And she wants to, you know, separate herself from that in some kind of way. I just felt it was odd. Like, why I mean, are you bringing it, this up it, right it, now? It'd be kind of like, it It makes sense because it's the same way that, like, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife just distanced herself from him and doing all the opposite shit of what he does. Mm-mm. She done invested, she done donated more money than he ever has. Ever. Yeah, well, she probably didn't work for that, though. But she's still showing that this ain't, it's him. Like, mm. this wasn't us. Mm. This is him. Like, this is how well, he was getting down. Like, he would. Dare I say this? Most women are men who marry into billions. Mm. If they get a separation and they get billions, she got bees. They'll naturally be more charitable than the person that created the billions. Right. You see what I'm saying? That nigga Bezos is still a piece of shit. People like Jeff Bezos get to a point where they, they're they patted on the back and given so much privilege because, oh, they're job creators. And the government ho- hoists them like that. So they walk around thinking that their charity is the fact that you get to work for one of their many companies for underpaid wages and yeah. all the other bullshit you go through working in America. But, yeah, I guess that's crazy. I just thought that was weird, man. Why now? You know what I'm saying? And Sometimes, because you know, just Gazelle, Giselle, whatever her name is, she's going through her the whole shit right now too. So who? Uh, just Lane, just whatever. Oh yeah, she in the pen. That's she just got found guilty on all right, that. Right, but here's what I'm saying. Like that's facts. You gotta get ahead of it. If Cause she probably gonna start. She's about to start sh- talking. Yes, nigga. Yeah, like, like if she was. If niggas thought she was gonna squeal before, like it obviously Ghislaine held it down in there. And she ain't finna She ain't really go in there and go all crazy. But now that she didn't got that time, yeah. she definitely why wouldn't she? Right. She Unless she knows without a shadow of a doubt. Somebody gonna murk her. I'll, I'll, I either need to do this time or die in here. I'd rather have you might have to just I'm not doing sixteen years. Oh, it was sixteen? I thought she got like sixty. Actually, bro, I think it is I something like sixty. She got like I think it is pretty much life in prison, bro. Some crazy shit. I'm just saying this. Yeah, okay. So if you That's know you're finna do 30 plus, you ain't saying shit. These niggas obviously don't give a fuck about you. Hey, G Knox, what's happening, bro? What's good, fam? See, this is the thing, though. I don't. 
You know what's crazy? As I closer get closer to forty, <laughs> I be rethinking shit. Like this gonna sound nuts, bro. I'm not doing forty. No. No. For those types. Hell no. Nah. And that's why I want to draw the line. Like, is it snitching really? Well, let's keep it real. Cause what did what did like, is what, it snitching though? What George Lucas do? Or Frank Frank Lucas? I mean. What Frank Lucas do? He couldn't wait to tell them fucking cops taking money out of his right. pocket, nigga. But this is the thing. And okay, I'm glad you went there. Right. I see where you right. went there, right? <laughs> it's it, you snitching, but it's different. On these one percent ass it's bitch ass different. niggas like, over here, and, I'm like Bill Clinton and them. And, and you're telling I'm on, not doing forty for the Clintons. You're man. telling on pedophiles. It's you don't way care, different. You, you don't get even, bail. Not to mention, she don't give a fuck about being labeled a snitch. Right. You, I'm just but, saying from my perspective, like, if I was. you would get bail for that because you're putting away fucking sexual offending. And she's in danger. Billionaires. She's in extra danger because you in there on some fugazi. For setting it up. Some of them chicks going to be in there like, what was you in there doing to them little girls? Oh, you going to do that to oh, us? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to make you do that to us. Yeah. She getting punked right now. You like being nasty? Oh, we love. That. Oh, okay, don't trip. Yeah, we we're gonna yeah, we're gonna that. treat you around here. <laughs> See, that shit crazy, fam. Like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm surprised hey, she's still alive. She gonna start singing, bro. I'm surprised though. They they have to be keeping her alive. Like, nah, man, she can't. I die guarantee you, right because now, because they're waiting for her to just like, yeah, I give in. And I be like, no, look, uh-uh. man. I guarantee go to the closet oh, over here at this guarantee, house. You're gonna see I, the pictures with Clinton in there. I guarantee you know, she's already. Allegedly. I guarantee she's, she's already given in. Right now, yeah, no, she, yeah, she's been given. Once she got sent back nigga. to that cell, knowing like there's no more court dates coming. Yeah, there's no appeals. There's the only thing is you and your lawyers talking to them like, yo, what can we do? Yeah, how can we knock some of this? Because not not because they'll fuck <laughs> around and just they can knock her time off and again just have her somewhere put up. Like, look. But that's what I mean. They're gonna yeah. knock her time. She's gonna have to be a special. Yeah. No, I didn't mean they was gonna knock her out. I said she'll tell, get some, did the time. But that's the thing. Off. It depends on what fraction of the government get to her first. You yeah, get me? There's some officials on there. Because what if it's some motherfucker? You know, it's always split. It's some niggas there's that's some trying to Mitch knock you Ma- off. There's some Mitch McConnell's and, and it's shit some on niggas there, that's trying yeah. not to knock you off, right? Mm-hmm. Like so, if you if AOC and them get you first, you're good. You might be good, yeah. right? But if old Mitch and them, no, get no, no. I think if she starts blowing the whistle. I think Biden and Kamala at that point have to go get her. She's too, yeah, she, it's too dangerous, to, right? If she starts naming them type of names, because here's why Biden and Kamala would have would have would go get her. One, politically, they're uh, going to go get her because it would define their presidency. Right. They're, and they ain't looking too hot right now. Yeah, not in the eyes of the public. That nigga's State of the Union. Fam. Let's talk. Oh. Yeah, hold on, nigga. Don't say don't talk. That nigga's state of the union. Oh yeah. We hold on, bro. We'll get into that. Hold we'll on. Get into that. Yeah, we'll get into it. But this is what I saw. I mean, niggas is looking for a defining moment for this presidency, nigga. And I am too. One thing I'll caution, and I ain't waving a flag for 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 no political figures right now because we don't have no none worth um really waving doing that. Flag but. For- <laughs> One thing I I will say is this it's this crunch that happens. We waited for four years. We didn't even wait. We just watched for four years while Trump did what he did mm-hmm. and commented on it. It's something that happens in America, like I notice when the Democratic Party and I think it's just because the Democratic Party is a little less racist than the Republican Party. Like two percent. Right. That like <laughs> you know, Remember, 70 million some of my people voted for Donald Trump mm-hmm. with all his racism and sexism mm-hmm. and xenophobia and all that other Everything, bullshit they got, right? Yeah. So with that being said, those people hold Democrats, even though they don't vote for them, mm-hmm. to a higher standard. Oh, yeah. Right? And so it's, oh, what about the people on the border? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, nigga, we just got elected three months ago. What about them, nigga? They've been there since Trump. Or let's, let's like, talk what, about something real quick. You know what I mean? Of the blame game. You motherfuckers over here blaming Joe Biden for gas right now? Just slap the shit out yourself. Well, that's all in a do part of you, what we're talking about. Do you right? realize that one of the countries that's trying to invade another country is 
responsible for 30% of our oil and gas here, right? So naturally, if we're putting sanctions on these niggas, fuck you think gonna happen to gas? So people that's out there arguing for sanctions because a white know supremacist nation is doing what white supremacist bring. nations do. Know what sanctions That's why bring. we got higher gas prices. Know what they bring. You're you're chokeholding a whole country that naturally that you do use one of their natural natu- national exports, nigga. Well, not necessarily theirs, but what they control. No, they're responsible for 30% of ours. They're responsible for it. And it's not necessarily like all that oil is coming from Russia. Right. It's coming from other brown nations that they control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel what you're saying. Like yeah. they're trying to control yeah. this white nation. Yeah. And everybody they, got yeah. their like, you know, panties in a bunch because they're upset. And I get it. Because it sits wrong across the board. Mm. But that's the reason why certain people in society speak out against these things year round. All the time. And we drown them out. We make fun of them a little bit. We we act like they take them take life too serious, but hey, man, hey, <laughs> and America's done some deeds that I don't think the American people would like have ever signed off on. What Hiroshima shit? All type of shit. Yeah. But you think that you, them Ukrainian people that we see and we feel sorry for, we, you don't you don't think that they're not responsible? They're not responsible for what the fuck their government does or mm-hmm. doesn't do. And just like the Russian people, no, the people in Russia, they were talking to them. They don't even know what the fuck is going on, really. They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, the, in Ukraine, they have like a, a Nazi, new Nazi regime, and yeah, we're going to go liberate to, yeah, them. Yeah, that's the bullshit that's that the, they're But trying niggas, to go talk to Americans about American wars, mm. and then go talk to the people that's, that we bombing. Right. And, 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 ask, and then see the difference in the story. Well, ain't none of that shit was good. Because look at Vietnam. This dead. is supremacy. Make no mistake about it. This is what we're talking about. One group of humans thinking that they should be able to think and, con- and control the life and legacies of other groups of humans. Motherfuckers, you don't even live in Ukraine. You live right. in Russia. You the president of Russia. Nigga, be the president of Russia. You want that make- ain't enough, though. Yeah, you want the Soviet. He wants the Soviet Union back. He. Right. Them billionaires is hurting over in Russia. See right how now. sad they are, though? Mm-hmm. You're cowards, though. Yeah, you're letting this nigga. Do There's it. a couple of them. Now I'm not gonna be funny, and I want to be dismissive. Shout out to the two or three Russian oligarchs that have called him out and stood their ground. I won't dare try to butcher your names. Right. I'm not being funny. I can't say your names. However, shout out to you because I'm like, bro, what good is it to be worth billions of dollars and be a coward? Yeah. Now, the, the problem is we thinking from a poor perspective, right? From a ground up perspective. And we're thinking of everything that you would have developed and built, the relationships, the, the, the security mm-hmm. with becoming a billionaire. When that shit's been handed to you, it's almost like it's, a, it's the, the reverse effect, right? Like yeah. now you're insecure about your money. Right. You're trying to hide it, nigga. You don't want to deal with certain people. You live a capsulated life, you yep. know what I'm saying? Kanye said, I don't got no house, nigga. I'm living out this suitcase, and I'll stop by that little corner store right there and get some drawers and some socks. Mm. He worth like eight, six billion, whatever it is. Like, But he's a free billionaire. Yeah. Hove, and you Look at Hov and Beyonce. They don't look like they're scared to live their life, and they're trying to hide. You know what I mean? Nah, nigga, ain't no guilt there. Nope. Oprah do what the fuck she want to do. Look at, the, we were just talking about a couple billionaires do what the fuck they want to do. Mm-hmm. Nobody gave them that money. No. So even if you disagree with how they move, which I do sometimes, I, I try to get out of, because we do this in our culture, we'll blame everything on Hove, or on 50, or on gang. All the rap stars that have pulled themselves out of selling crack, drop out of school, and then getting shot, murder, people that we tell our kids and loved ones to stay away from. Those are the ones that now, because they made success and and an extreme wealth with our support, we feel like they should they we hold them more responsible for the than the elected officials that represent the, the the places we live. We don't even know them motherfuckers' names, right? So we gotta ask ourselves because what's gonna happen is look if you're of a certain class of people like fuck it I'm gonna just keep it a buck a black American foundational black American to be exact. What happens if 
we bring in, okay, it's 1.8 million Ukrainians that's already fled. Let's say we bring in 800,000 of those. We give them a reparations package because apparently America's cool with giving everyone reparations other than uh, the black people, the uh, black indigenous ex-slaves of this nation. It's another whole another podcast. But that being said, that's gonna happen if they come here, so they do that. Now I, now I sound like the guy that's xenophobic, that's anti-immigration, that's the selfish American, but I, what if I'm saying like, yo, Ukraine has a problem with white supremacy. Mm-hmm. So out of 800,000 Ukrainians, they, it's, not, it's not fair to assume white supremacy on all those people. Right. But shit, what if like 100,000 of them are white supremacists? I thought we wasn't with that. Yeah. See, because speaking of Ukraine, I was going to speak about it, but we can't keep talking about the Ukrainian people and and not talk about the racism that's going on in the Ukrainian war. Like right now, even in war, these people have time to be racist against black people. Mm Mm-hmm. In war. That's the craziest shit, yeah. Even in war, like, nah, fam, hold on. Us Get your first. black ass out the way. Nigga. We, 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 they beating them we and all type shit of shit. First, but if you just seen your student housing bombed and all that type of shit, and right. you see Russia out there breaking all type of NATO laws and, like, they ain't giving a fuck, right? Right. And they bombing shit and bombing shit. But billionaires run our country. Billionaires and oligarchs. And what do they own? Oil refineries and shit like that. Yeah. And what does Putin Steel have a lot of strong, strong hold on? So it comes down with, I said it before, if you give Putin, first off, if Putin was of dark skin, he would be billed as an evil dictator already. Mm-hmm. Now we just kind of loosely know, like, oh, you know, we'll fuck with Putin. He's crazy. You know, Putin's kind of, Putin's a fucking thug. He's an international gangster. Yeah. Right. But because of his image and, and dare I say his lineage, Right, he's a European man, and America, and the and, and the EU are scared to punish him. Mm-hmm. They went in there and killed Saddam. Yeah, on national TV. This is what we do to y'all if y'all get out of line. Yeah, <laughs> killed him. Right, they killed Sadd- Gaddafi's whole bloodline. That means they killed kid. They killed his grandchildren. His they killed every man in his bloodline Knocked that was living. Whole bloodline, uh, yeah, but we ain't went after this dude. All of those dudes didn't have to grow up to be a, a per- even. If, I don't. I mean, I'm not gonna say if Gaddafi was a bad person or not. Mm. That's not for me to say. But they don't all have to be their father. But I understand politics in America, and, and it's just the way the world works. I get it. So okay, no tears shed for Gaddafi. I mean, I remember quoting Hillary Clinton. As at a presidential debate or, or presidential stop, she said, um, while running for office, oh, well, what about Gaddafi? We came, we saw him, he died. Like basically, Bolsonaro, yeah, I killed Gaddafi. That's my hit. I, I get credit for that. I killed right. me more Gaddafi. A president of his nation that, man, just look up Libya. Um, just, just look up, look up Gaddafi and, and his government and what his government was doing for the people of his of his home and and all of Africa and you'll understand why the western world had to have him sniped. Yeah. Okay. So, when we talk about these things, we just got to have real conversations. We just got to have real conversations. What are we talking about? Are we saying that this is only wrong because it's happening to a what we look at as a predominantly white white nation cuz what was it? Um I think I had it written down. Over 300 students. Over 300, uh, yeah, over 300 students. Oh, wait, no, excuse me. That's for something different. I'm tripping. I was like, those numbers don't make sense. 76,000 students in um, Ukraine, because Ukraine builds how they're getting a lot of money from um, different fractions of the world and stuff like that is they're building the, themselves as this new democracy in a place that democracy is really like looked down upon. And they, they're they welcoming nation students. So they welcome black students from the Caribbeans in Africa, right? They actually actively recruit these students mm-hmm. to come there and, and study. Shit on them. 
and now you got 76,000 of them there. <laughs> so this ain't just like a couple hundred dudes and, and women that happen to be black and, and it could be circumstance and it could be just coincidence that something happened and they're just showing it. You're talking about 76,000 people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Over 40% of them are from Africa. That's a lot of people. When you're making a hard stance that no black person can get on this train to safety. Right. Or no black person can take this highway to safety because we only got a limited time before they blow this highway down. And we can't waste the time saving a black person's life. What kind of shit is that? So when America starts looking at using American tax dollars, like how deep we want to get to this how how far back we want to go do we want to go back to where we we can trace our foundational black lineage to a thousand years before Columbus came here mm -hmm. right and that's documented through European notation right or do we want to just start or stop at the at the time of them throwing us in slavery and bondage okay so when do we want to start and stop as to where black America will be looking at this? Fuck it, Latino America, Latin America, you know what I mean? We'll be looking at, poor white America will be looking at this shit and be like, yo, I, I feel you, that sucks. We got problems over here though that ain't been being worked on. Right, because I looked at the map fam, they were showing where, I just was curious, they were showing where all the, you know, hey, the world stood up for black lives during the George Floyd thing. And that's true. A lot of places did that shocked us, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to them. Shout out to Africa. Shout out to Europe. Shout out to Asia. Shout out to the Amish people. Shout out to all, all people, right? Fam, you know who didn't? Ukraine. I'm just saying, fam. But you know what I keep hearing when I be watching Vice News and shit like that? Mm -hmm. Ukrainians getting on the microphone saying that Americans need to help them. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, bro, where's all this love and support for Americans? Yeah, why do we always have to help y'all? Like, I'm not talking, because they really talking to our government. Mm -hmm. But nigga, they, do they not, not understand that motherfuckers is in America fucked up of all races, <clears throat> of all religious beliefs and backgrounds? Yeah, we have the freedom to protest those things, but we have died and fought for those freedoms over here. You want us to come fight and die for yours right and now? And I just want the rest of the world, now that we can talk to each other. Hey, bro, from a, an, a, a person that comes from a long lineage of American people, from before this place was called America, you have to fight and die for freedom. That sounds callous. That sounds like un, like you're not sensitive, but there's a lot of people in this country that benefit from what our people and other people like our people went through. Mm -hmm. Not just black people, but there's other elements of indigenous and uh, poor people that were brought here for only the, the point of exploitation, right? Right. And these people, through years of developing, they're, they're young and pushing education and fighting and clawing, because of what we went through, we always fought for the inclusion of others. So these very same people are the people that fight for immigration, are the people that fight for our government to step in and intervene and help in different ways and circumstances. Ain't nobody asking uh, the government to hit Russia up and tell them to let uh, Brittany Griner go. She's an American hero, right? You caught her with the vape pen. She served her, her on her way out, fam. Yeah. Served her country. Right, she played for that USA. Right, she did. Oh yeah, she's an American here, but nobody's gonna call and make that call for her. That girl might really sit in jail. Right, I wouldn't be surprised if she sat in jail. And that's sad, fam. She means more than that. That's fucked up. Fucking but this is this is what Americans should player. understand, though. Yeah, it's like, bro, the the world has to and this is not to shun anybody that's that's in their homeland fighting for liberation this this is to encourage this is to let you know that you have a comrade over here in america but it's to also inform you that like man america ain't everything that it seems 
for the people that build it and uplift it. You know, so it, it becomes a tug and pull when you have a certain fragment of, of people that build and uplift America. America's taking from them, giving them very little in return, and then telling them to work harder because they're in America, right? And then you see them cut checks for 400000 and up for uh, what, what, what people from, what was that, uh, almost at the Taliban, but I didn't mean it, like uh, the Afghanistan mm. refugee people that had to leave because they helped America. They didn't help America. They were helping themselves. They were fighting for their freedom. They were assisting Americans and allegedly fighting for their liberation and freedom. Right. Or were they? Mm. Or were they doing some slime ball shit, betraying their people, trying to help America come in and take over? Right. And then it didn't work, and it's like, yo, you know they're going to kill me for what I did. Y'all got to get me up out of here. Now nah, we got you. Don't trip. We'll use some of these poor people's money. Motherfucker. We'll use some of these poor people's money that we got. These Americans, they stupid. They think they live a better life than everybody else. <laughs> Nigga. That's what it comes down to, fam. Right? Because if you do a little research, all you keep hearing and seeing is a better quality of life in other places. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, are, is it going to be like that for a black American person? No. Is it going to be like that for a Hispanic person? Is it going to be like that for a person that's homosexual, that's trans, right? That's disabled? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you got to have bread to find these little pockets in the world and relax and just be a human, right? But. I get annoyed, and I know a lot of American people get annoyed watching these things, and it's just like, bro, I'm trying to figure out how I'm about to move and pay this, and woo, woo, woo. And nigga, our government sucks in terms of looking out for its own. And y'all niggas is on TV. We ain't never heard of you motherfuckers. We ain't hear y'all niggas fighting for us for this, this, and that. We don't hear y'all fighting for us for higher minimum minimum wages. None of that shit. Because what if the international community is like, y'all pay the Americans what per hour? Right. As the richest nation in the world that got army bases here and resources here and doing this, that's that's un that that's unacceptable. You, you, we ask the American people to help and donate and push their government to to meddle in other affairs. Now, meanwhile, when our government do the foul shit that they be doing in other people's affairs, they they get deaf to all America. Right? There's nations that hate American people. Because they don't know that American people aren't those rich white men in suits, nigga, that's shitting on them all the time. Right. They shitting over here, too. On us. Like the only difference, America. like Brother Tariq always say, is that the, the, there's something. Not only FBA people, the people of America will fight the government as much as we can. You know what I'm saying? We going to fight. We got a lot of political brothers and, and sisters over the, over the struggles from all races and nationalities in jail for life. Got fucked up shit, mysterious deaths. You know what I'm saying? Our government just knows how to cover it up in front of the world community better. They're not going to give you too many more Martin Luther Kings and Malcolm X so that when they're negotiating certain things, those other world leaders can bring that back up and chastise them about it. And you're a fool if you don't think it happened. They don't do those things anymore. It's, it's much more covert. You understand? So when we're, when we're talking about the whole thing about the Ukraine, it's hard not, I'm a black person. You telling me if I was in fucking Ukraine on a, a mission for work or doing my, my job sent me over there to do some work, now I can't get to safety because I'm black? So if the only place that a black man has alleged protections or a man of color or a woman who identifies differently or a man that identifies if the only place we are free to, to to exist is america why in the fuck will we fight for anything other than america get like us <laughs> right because i see a whole bunch of young black boys and girls getting suited up and i guarantee you they about to send them over there to die in fucking ukraine and russia to protect a whole bunch of people Man, that I'm ain't standing up to the fuck. white supremacy in their country yep i'm not seeing enough white U ukrainians say hey what i'm hearing about what they're doing to those black students and migrants and and the black people that are actually that live in ukraine see we're gonna stop acting like there's black people only live in africa and only in places that they took them in slavery, black people have been all over the world since the world existed. Right. 
So that's just a point that I can't help but to look at. So if you if we're sitting here at the table, the round table, which unfortunately we don't really have, our government is gonna do what the fuck they wanna do, right? If they they gonna give these cats some money and bring them over, do whatever they do, send some people over there, whatever. Mm-hmm. We can't control that. But I often sometimes wonder, man, what if people, the very people that this country has been founded on, the very people that this country exploit, the American people, what if they just was like, yo, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Maybe get some of those refugees to, to to suit up on this mission. Right. Maybe get some of those, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody, cause we doing a lot and, and we have a, a nation that's not really doing well. Bro, we don't have the longest life expectancy. We don't have the highest literacy rate. Like, we don't have none of that shit. This is the most stressful place to live on Earth. Mm-hmm. And there's other places that are bomb written. They, they tell us they're, they're war-torn. Mm-hmm. How are they not more stressful to live? Right. How motherfuckers graduating and more literate there? <laughs> but if you look at some of the, like, countries that, like, outclass America in education. It don't make no it's sense. It's laughable. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all of them. Right. But it's laughable. And what it is is that God forbid America ever gets invaded. Because what you see and what they champion about the Ukrainian people, that shit ain't about to happen here. And anybody that makes it to these shores is going to be smart enough to know that. Mm-hmm. It depends on which way you come in, brother. Yeah. Because if you come in through black America with tanks and all type of weaponry, it's a lot of brothers and sisters that might suit up against your ass. And shoot the, start shooting shit up. You get what I'm saying? There's a lot of poor white motherfuckers that ain't really feeling the government right now, mm-hmm. fam. There's yeah. a lot of Hispanic people that's like, yo, some of this used to be a country that we took mm-hmm. originally. And you know what the FBA culture and community is on. Right. Fam, we have no allies. Like, who, what, the, what is it? Y'all ain't doing nothing for us. Nigga, look how Joe Biden ran, p- peddled his ass to black people for two years. Yep. Right? The fuck you mean you're not about to do nothing for black America? <laughs> Fund the police. And I just want people to understand that. Pay attention to that. We have Everybody knows what the police come from. The police comes from the slave patrol units. So black America is never going to have a good relationship with the police. And the police ain't never going to have a good relationship with, Ameri- with black America. It's up, for, it's up to now other Americans, other so-called Americans, right, mm-hmm. to to have a problem with that. But until little white boys start getting their brains blown out by the cops for nothing, till white girls get their head beat in by a cop for nothing because she had an attitude when she had to give them the ID like they do our sisters and shit like that, till these type of things happen, nigga, that shit ain't about to change. Not at all. It's not about to change. You can't say George Floyd mattered. Right. There's been fucking 50 George Floyds since he died. Like 12 in the same city. Right. Hey, in Minnesota, they keep killing black people. They, they defying, like, oh, y'all want y'all, y'all to turn up and embarrass us over George? Watch this. Y'all can't, the news ain't going to keep coming. Hold my beer. Hey, man, it's like the, uh, in sports, when you get away with playing a little physical mm. and the coach realized the ref ain't calling it. Oh, they not calling that? What they used to do to Mike Vick? Treat that nigga like a fucking linebacker with the ball. Yeah. Because the refs didn't call it. Yeah. It's the you play Mike Vick differently than you play the Tom Brady mm-hmm. or Peyton Manning. You hit them low, your ass might be out the game. Suspension, a couple hundred thousand. Right. Fine. Rules going to change and shit. They was fucking Mike Vick up. Oh, he's a runner. <laughs> yeah, whatever, all right. Right. Well, and I'm not even saying that's a race thing. I'm just saying that's just they didn't fuck with Mike Vick like that thing. But what I'm saying is when when you know what you can get away with, we in a boxing match, and I and you know Floyd used to sometimes use that forearm on niggas because they was bigger than him, and he yeah. get up off me. Hey, if the ref don't call it, or if I pot shot you and 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 tie up every time, and the ref ain't stopping me or calling it. I'm gonna use that. I'm just you, gonna nigga. keep scoring on you. Yeah. That's where we at. <clears throat> let me talk to you about my problem with. Yeah, let me talk to my people. I mean, my people. I mean, my people of my same 
racial background. Just because you are my friend or we have some type of relationship, be acquaintance, be whatever it is. You might know my nigga right here. You might know my brother. I don't owe you. I don't owe you affordability, my nigga. Elaborate on that. What you mean? You talking about like with the beats and shit like that? I don't know nobody a deal for shit that takes my skill to do. Oh, that's facts. That goes without saying. That's for anybody. No, but a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people. And this niggas do this the most. Equate friendship with you should get a deal and get a plug and all that shit. So, for instance, right? I'm saying no names, but it's individual. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been telling people I'm going to retire from shoot. I, I was on this live, this Instagram live with a few, with like two clients Baby of mine. Baby boy. Or whatever. And I was like, um, I think I'm going to retire from doing videos. They're really making me about this. And they asked me questions. So I was like, because like the price point doesn't make sense anymore. Because when I, like, motherfuckers want me to shoot a video for two hundred dollars. Hmm. That don't do nothing for me. Say I shoot five videos in a week, right? That's a thousand bucks. Right. That's still fifty hours of work. More than a normal work week. Mm hmm. For a grand. So mm -hmm. it's the saying I'm making two hundred dollars a day, right? For my profession I should I make most people in my profession, even without any type of like big credentials, is seventy five to one fifty an hour. Right. So essentially, you should be paid. I should be charging you a. I should charge a thousand dollars a video. Right. So why don't you, nigga? Please, you because everybody in Las Vegas, man. All the I'm bruh. I'm not even looking at those porch. But a lot of you Las Vegas videographers got the fucking game fucked up. And what I mean by that, you're the type of nigga that sees a nigga selling good dope for 20 bucks. You that nigga say, I got two for 15. Or I got the one for 10. Yeah, they're going to step on you it. You fucking the game up. Not only are you short selling yourself for what the fuck you're doing and how much you done spent on all this equipment, how much hours and time you done spent Maybe they, learning the craft okay, ahead, and, and, and all that shit. Mm -hmm. You go into all these Las Vegas hip hop groups and shit, they're charging 150 to 250 a video. What's the quality? 8K. What's good quality? Oh, yeah. They're giving. They're, What's the layout? Are the videos dope? They're, or are they just new, like random? Just it I'm, does Y'all looking cool doing whatever y'all doing. For two, recording. for two fifty, it it pretty much doesn't matter what you give them at that point. Right. You can give a nigga an iPhone thirteen video for two fifty. Is what I'm saying. Well, I'm just. Thinking I'm talking I'm, about I'm, niggas are taking three, four, five thousand dollar cameras to video shoots. They're getting paid two hundred dollars for. But what if I'm just throwing this out there? I don't know. Like, what if they looking at it like, because you're right, the game might just be fucked up here, and they don't know no better, but what if they looking at it like, maybe it's a lot, you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot of people, I hear it's calm, I'm trying to, there's a lot of people uh, transient here, which means they don't live here, but they're going to be here, nigga, doing videos and shit. But, the, let me but just, they're hold, still, let, let okay. me land, but let me just do as many as I can, because if they looking at the year tally, then it's a different story. Fuck the gear tally, because if you're making, how do you feel good that you have a fucking craft and you've probably made less than somebody that worked at McDonald's all year? I don't think that. If you're talking the year, if you make a two hundred a day and you really do get to do like five days a week, you ain't making less than a nigga that work at McDonald's. Right? You're making okay, so you're making fifty two thousand dollars a year, right? Is that it? Yeah. 
You know, yeah. I said two hundred five videos a week. Ain't nobody making two hundred dollars a day. I don't believe you even. In the, you have to have enough time to be able to edit a video. You have to have days off. Okay. So five days is realistic. Because it literally will take you about four to five hours to edit a video. So you could knock out five videos in a weekend that you did that week. Mm-hmm. Right. So you make fifty two thousand dollars. I don't think a nigga at McDonald's will make it 52. That's just me. I could be wrong. I have five food restaurants that pay you out. A nigga in and out is. Chick-fil-A. Let me see. Yeah, that's crazy, though. Here's the thing, though. These niggas aren't releasing five videos a week. They're not shooting five videos a week. Well, not one individual, probably. But here's my thing also. None of these niggas do it full. The majority of these niggas don't do it full time. The videos? That's where they're fucking the game up as well. Yeah, it was just side money to them. Mm-hmm. I got a camera, nigga. So quit fucking up the game. Keep your ass. That's at what your, it comes down to. Keep your I, ass at your nine to five. I got a camera. And leave it to the niggas. Who, leave it to us, niggas. So you complained. That's what it is. You complained about the I got a camera, niggas. Oh yeah. Because you're a you know videographer and shit like that. You're passionate about it, nigga. It's a skill set that you have honed, and you really sit with artists and build a motherfucking video up, nigga. Tell a story, all that. Here's my but, thing too. The niggas. What ain't it? When the nigga I was talking to. Said because he has two kids mm-hmm. and he has habits because he sm- he smokes a lot. I'm gonna give it out. Uh, this nigga smokes a lot of weed. Mm-hmm. I should shoot his videos for 150 and look out for him because I'm his friend. And if I was really his friend, I would be looking out for him. Well, how's he looking out for you though? Exactly. Niggas don't ever look at that. They don't want to talk about that. None no, of that. Like, is he? Does he buy beats from you? Like. Nope. Is he, you know what I'm saying? Nope. What? Nigga got his taxes today. Went and bought an $800 pair of dunks. They hit me for no video. But just paid a nigga 150 to shoot a video. Somebody else, because they did it for the 150 Well, nigga, yeah, he getting it how he lives, my nigga. That's, he's silly to think you could throw, like, a friendship cord in there. So let's look but, good for the video Let's look good in the video instead of making sure the video looks good that we're in. You want to make a, make sure the video looks good. That's the difference. That's why you should charge more. And when niggas say, why are you charging more? Show them your video real and be like, that's the difference. You got to set the price. But it's to. just it's just crazy that motherfuckers think that because you're not going to hook them up with a deal, you're not really their friend, bro. Well, that's silliness. Like... That's just silly. I mean, what you gonna say about that? that? That's just some silly shit. You feel me? But these are necessary things. I've done my one fifty two hundred dollar work videos, nigga. That was five years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, that ended five years ago. Two years into this game, and then I went. I've been at a consistent three fifty for five years. Now I want five to seven. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And the crazy thing about that, in these motherfuckers, where I was trying to interject earlier, before I let you land and everything, is you're talking about there's a lot of like in and out people who come and just visit. Shit, my in and out customers pay me whatever the fuck I ask. That's what I'm saying. That's what you concentrate on there. Like, because, yeah, bro, unless you see somebody, this is me. I got to, hold on real quick. <laughs> um, my bad. I hate to keep doing this go ahead. to you. No, go ahead. Um, this dude, Jack Joe, who's Mia X's son from mm-hmm. No Limit, and this dude, 93 Bread. Shout out to y'all. I'm the only videographer they fuck with when they come here. They don't go look for nobody else. As soon as they land, they call me. Good shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I'm done with the... And, and niggas try to still sell you this dream, Kim. Well, nigga, when I, you know, if I blow up, we all blow up. 
Nigga, if that was the case and that well, do really you see, do you see them? <laughs> What's up, sis? Do you see them blowing up though? Not the route they're taking. Do I see them with potential so, very much so? Okay. But see, here's now, the, but here's the thing. On, what I was gonna say. They would they don't here's why they're gonna lose every time. They don't invest right. They don't want to invest okay, in but this crap. What right. I was gonna say is like, dog, if you come across somebody, mm. and and this brings me to a, a point, Kanye's cameraman, a nigga that had talent, did stand up, was a little older than Ye, did music, he did all the shit that Ye was doing. You know what I'm saying? To an extent, had his own little buzz and all that stuff. Had his little run. Could have realistically been like, no, I'm still trying to. You know, I still got looks. Had a little uh, public access show, right? And that's where I got my start behind and in front of a camera. It's public access television, so I know something about it. Only thing is, I wasn't in a top market like Chicago, like you know what I'm saying. So when he started doing Sub Zero type shit, nigga, a little Channel Zero, or whatever it was called, to where like the the yet local hip hop scene knew about it. You know, you do interviews and like have niggas freestyling, come to their studio session. Well, he seen, he spotted Kanye, and this is when Chicago was on fire with Hoop Dreams. Hoop Dreams had just dropped. And he was like, he was filling in from one of the dudes that couldn't record. Right. And he didn't need to be on camera that session, so he was like, fuck it, I'll just teach me how to do it. So he had kind of found a liking to, to recording. Turns out his dad used to work camera and shit like that. Had a connection there, it was like, oh, I'm kind of feeling this camera thing, right? It spoke to him. He's around this kid and he's like, hey, and this is arrogant young Kanye. Who that's not really popping, don't got no fan base or no money to pay nobody. And he's just like, yo, I want to follow you every day and record you. I think you're going to be a star. Right. And Kanye was like, yo, I think I'm about to be a star too. That's what I'm saying, bro. We need to do this. And that's how their relationship kind of forged. And you know, you've seen the documentary, right? Mm-hmm. The whole the whole three, three joints. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was dope because what you're talking about it's kind of, 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 that's like the prefaces of it, right? Like, nigga, don't think because you, you looking cute in front of the camera with the girls I help call on the range to be over there and to act like they like you, uh, and I'm shooting you, making you look like hove, nigga. Don't think for one second that what I'm doing ain't integral. Right. Right? But that's why I like that documentary. Because motherfuckers that make it, they understand the little things. I used to have a basketball coach that would drill this in my head. A nigga would throw a lob. I don't care if motherfucker converted or not. Curse me out every time. And he was like, man, you can't be great until you do the little things. Mm-hmm. Until you are overly obsessive about doing the little things, it's not going to pop for you. So there's artists that before they got signed, and maybe even through when they got signed, they wake up and they write. I'm a writing from, I'm just making up times. Mm -hmm. From seven to 10 every morning. I don't give a fuck what's popping. My girl, my kids, everybody know, nigga. Seven to 10, he gonna be mumbling to himself, leave him fuck alone, right? We gotta set boundaries for ourselves if we wanna trampoline into success. You know what I mean? So. It's about that discipline. That's where that line comes from, nigga. You can't fathom my love, right? Imagine Here's, five beats a day for three summers. You know what that's like. Oh, fuck yeah. I don't know what that's like. Fuck like, yeah. I could imagine, because I'd be in the studio with niggas and whoop, 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 whoop. But I, I'm in and out, nigga, whoop, whoop, like whatever. I could equate it to this. That's like, a lot. Imagine this. Imagine you're doing so many beats and you're listening to music so much. You ever, you've been in. Yeah. Big crowd situations hooping where you have to drain. You're eventually your ears just drain all that shit out. Hear, it's you don't just hear nothing, a bunch nigga. Of mush. Right? You don't hear nothing. You don't know what you're yeah. listening to. That's facts, nigga. That's facts. I'll spend so much time on a beat that I have to walk away because everything just sounds like it's just a mushy mess. Right. And really, it's not. It's crisp. It's clean. It's clear. But I've yeah, that's, my I, ears I get what are you're tired. Saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I hear what you're saying. Them drums are tight. Like, they don't know how to even hear the octaves and shit no more. Like, they're like, I'm a d- nigga. <laughs> it's time to death this shit. Right. Just give me five right. minutes and we'll get right. back to it. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like changing your palate over when you're tasting some shit, yeah. right? Yep. Eating sushi or something. You got to eat that or ginger. Or even, even if I you know go mean? listen to a new, new beat. New beat or something. It, right, Reef, I need Reef. a cleansing of yeah, my Let me palate. go out the room right. for a minute and hear somebody's voice and talk right. to some people and shit. No, I get it. Even changing the beat. Of yeah, no, I get what you're saying. the palate real quick. It'll give me new. It, like, it just. It's the same shit, you know what I'm saying? So, so I was bringing that correlation to say is that like when you have, that's the hand in glove situation. To use the Mike Jackson Quincy Jones formula, you have to find like minded body. Right. You can be a dual threat of an MC producer, but you really need to start. You really can only afford at this point in your career, honestly, one of the other. to work with elite MCs mm-hmm. or co-produce with other. Elite, elite producers, producers. Exactly. like nigga. I'm honest. I'm being honest with you. If you hear a nigga song and you hear a nigga rap and he's not nice, nigga. I mean nice. It's time to put that ear on. It's, it's that snap now. Niggas ain't had time to perfect their fucking craft. Nigga. Oh, I don't. Yeah, if I you're don't. Not I don't nice, even sell beats. You can't even, I don't even sell. What are we talking no about? You know what I'm saying? The you know only way saying? you get a beat from me, I have to personally if I think I you're want nice. you to have it. That's a, that's what I'm saying. If so I'm, I'm like, I got the next this move. Is you, nigga, hey, here. the next move, and and y'all niggas get in the chat. Tell me if I'm bugging uh, when y'all see this, because I know our live audience isn't always as, as big, but uh, a lot of y'all watch this on the replay, man. And I'm just gonna say, like, it's all the MCs and shit. Am I bugging if I tell my man's like, yo, you definitely produce the joint, send him the track, the shit's fire, but I need you need a copy of that. You tell me. Is that just me, nigga, not knowing what the fuck I'm talking about? Like, can I you, need a copy of you're it? You're doing too much. Yeah. Am I doing too much? If I be like, I'm managing it's you right a courtesy. now. Go. It's just, just a saying. courtesy. Right. But then I have to also be trusted not to leak the track. Not to leak the track. Cool. So I wouldn't even, I wouldn't want it. Well, if it's good business. Play it, play it for me. You know what I'm if saying? If it's good FaceTime business. Or put, bring no, me think the about studio it. No, think about let it. Let me hear it. If it's good business, right? Mm-hmm. I got the copy of the track. Boom. You, nigga. You, you see anything? All right, cause just a sign off, nigga. Like, yeah, you hear this, man? It's, it's fire. Mm. When you dropping it? Oh man, probably not to the summer. Okay, well, no. well hold on. Go just ahead. hear me out. All right, not for the summer. Isn't it bad business? Or is it? I'm asking you. I don't want to lead the question. Most artists. Is it bad business for me to leak the song? Absolutely. Like not just on the relationship front, like. Economically, absolutely right? nobody. Re- there's no. So if it leaks, it's more so not that you leaked it; it's that you failed to protect it from a nigga like me coming yeah. in, nigga, and be like, "Yo, I just heard some shit." With like, so-and-so like nigga, nigga, this is supposed and to I be. I send it to the homie, and be, now it's out because that's supposed to be my baby too. Right? No, me I get leaking it, getting I get it leaked, it. it fucks up the release of it. Because I got a leak story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my, my, man. No, oh, the Mingo E forty shit, right? No, nah, no, nah, that nigga, it was it was a Chrome. Oh, Chrome E forty, right? Uh, yeah. They 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 went on ahead and released. I remember me and Chrome. because nigga Chrome we and them was dragging. Through, they we feet. was going through a lot of pins now, and needles on, to try to get this. it. Let me say this. And and really now, if you tell me summertime, and it's fall, I'm releasing it. You'll get your points. We'll go platinum, but obviously. I'm not gonna let a fucking. I'm I'm personally not gonna let you shelf something that I. It's gonna be hot. That's gonna change my life. That's stupid. That could change my life. Right. Like, see, so this is the thing, and, and this is where I exalt. This ain't really. The only thing, my 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 guy could have did differently, and it's something that you you can't advise a nigga to do. Like they have to fill it within their bones to right. justify doing it, because they gonna have to lay in that bed if shit go left. Right. And that's the ice cube route. That's the hove route. That's the, if you listen to certain stories, that's the game route. Mm-hmm. Game was just talking about that on Drink Champs. Some like he got out of his deal on some street shit because he realized that y'all fucking me, right? Y'all doing this, and I got this little short, scary, um, older Jewish billionaire guy in the office, and he's the one that has to sign the paper, and he's basically holding his nuts, nigga. Like fuck you, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I know I fucked you. Yeah. You gonna give me my money and make this deal? Right. Okay, now we talking gangster shit. Mm-hmm. So this is the real world. That's why Suge became a, a a beast in the music industry because he brought, okay, y'all doing this gangster shit where y'all got the authorities on y'all behalf. You can call security and have me banned from the video and you own legally. But if I come in here and punch you in the fucking face, I bet you sign that release for Dre. 
I bet you signed that release for Dre. Just like if you go watch that uh, documentary, um, A Genius Escapes the Hood, Jay-Z and them got a deal that was supposed to pay them like 2.5 mil if they exceeded a certain number on a single and they knew they were gonna do it so they took the deal like, yeah, all right, bet. We already an independent joint. We technically don't need y'all. Man, that 2.5 mil turned into like 200. And Dame was telling them like, yo, you don't understand. This nigga is from the hood. Like he's talking about hope. He's like, yo, this nigga's a street nigga. Like he don't know nothing about these lawyers and checks and how it take time to clear and all this. And it was like, and then he, and then when Dame found out to check him out, he was like, "Oh, y'all think this is a game?" And he just left the office, like, cause he he was just like, "Damn, now I gotta go try to talk Hov into like taking an L for two point five million, and this is a street dude that made all his M's in the streets where nobody give those kind of passes." And you're telling him the only person that can change that is that that suburban white guy with a college degree walking to his car right now. That's who you're telling me. Oh no, we about to roll up on him if you really about that. So my boy, and I can speak on his behalf on it, my nigga Mingo, I he went over there on some other shit. I was with him. Like, bro, I need that. Nah. Cause they was both in this signed to the same situation with the same type of label. So like it was one of them things where he was like, yo, no, I need that, bro. Like, and I, I remember thinking, like, I kind of feel him. He went over there, got the shit that he wanted. He left a lot of shit, but it was like, nah, I need this for my, I've been working on this, I want this. And what Mingo did that I disagree with, is I was telling him like, bro, get some features. Cause one of the things that had happened is nigga, it was a hard drive full of verses. I'm talking about for everything from motherfucking like, dog, from game, Nipsey. To, oh, cause the rich white dude. Huh? It was, it was everything dog. Like he was, he, he had a situation where he was signed to Snoop's management. So he had some little yeah. access too. Right. It wasn't all just about his bread. He had access because he, he was in the industry basically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On a small level. Like had he done it. He was like right. Yowda. Who? Yowda. Yeah, but I ain't gonna lie, dog. He was a little, he had a little more up At, on. He had a little no. But no, he, he didn't. okay, let's no, say he didn't. this. Let's he was say like Yowda. He, he had, was like Yowda. He had more bread he than was, Yowda. No, actually, dog, Yowda was a little better off because look. But Yowda had more music coming out no, than him. This is what it is. He came into the game with more with more than y'all. Okay. Right? Okay. And we don't need to talk about that. Okay. He came in with up, right? Up. So then like anything that he's getting off that, I think that what the, the problem was, and see this is me coming to the situation real late. Right. Nigga just looking out for my man's and I'm like, dog, I think niggas ain't my like I don't think he knew how to monetize it. Nope. And that's the fucked up part. I don't want to go into that. That's the like fucked that up part, part about if a we'll nigga talk about who comes into camera. something with money. We'll talk about that part off camera. If somebody but. comes into something with millions, they don't know how to monetize the new thing for millions because their millions probably wasn't made monetizing this new thing before. Right. So like, so you, so this is the thing. Because like you said, Jay and them are street dudes. Now we street all dudes really know how to monetize anything. Well, that's what. And okay. Dame was a smart now you're business nigga. Dame was already he in the industry. He already was a yeah. manager. He already had relationships at the labels. Yep. But the thing that 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 you know for that little deal that they got out. Mm -hmm. No, I'm a, I'm pull up the clip for you and send it to you. Like it's crazy because the dude is cool with it now because he just like man, I tried to get him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it you know, a lot of you rappers be talking that street shit and you'll go shoot and kill somebody that look like y'all. But you ain't coming But you to won't me. do nothing to me. Yeah. And shit, that man. That was the difference between Hov and them niggas. Came they came in there, pulled up, the and slapped folks. them niggas up. Yep. Well, the thing is, it's got to be about equal opportunists. Like, I wasn't joking about the whole Putin thing. Like, I mean, okay, Putin's not a, a world leader that we would all tell our kids to be like. Right. However, he the same. Yeah. All the time. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. That's like, real. That's real. You don't bend or break for no. Like, bro, he's out there practicing white supremacy on a white nation. Like, this is what that is. Like, no, we taking this, yeah. right? We coming through. We got more weaponry. You know what I'm saying? We got more manpower, and we we got so much control here. We control the messaging and the and the ideals of our people, so they don't even know why. There's rumors that you know some Russian soldiers was putting their shit down. Like, I'm out. We don't know. Right. We don't really know. Um, it's weird to me that like that's going on, right? You heard about his twenty three man hit list, right? Bro, I heard the nigga got a Glitch nuke. Glitch is on it. Yeah, I know. I heard he got a nuke looking at like pointing right at us in Vegas. It'll never. It it won't reach us. 
is the well, issue. Well, fam, I don't even. My whole thing is from all the military family and, and, and people that I know of the military. We got dumbass speak about missile it. defense system. What they say America, is that bro. a lot of Putin shit might be just fugazi. Because they they're known for like but, subpart weaponry and, and, and exactly. And, and, and but here's the thing: you got technology you and shit got like that. Something point how how many nukes you got pointed at us? How many fucking ships and submarines are hovering around your country right now, armed? Yeah, see, that's a that's the whole thing. What, what like, this shit okay. remind me of battleship in real right. life, right? Like, like you know what? What, I mean? what makes you think that our whoever runs our military? I need to find a battleship board, who, bro. I got the battleship. In the closet, I swear. Yeah, nigga, we about to. I'm about. To, we about to have a game night, dog. <laughs> and one night we about to battleship and talk some shit. Yeah, I got battleship. And go live or something, closet. cause nigga, that was my game. Yo, so nah, cause here's the, the thing, like, we're the only documented people to use a nuclear weapon. Why would you want to threaten the only niggas known to wipe somebody off the face of the earth? See, this is why. Putin is intelligent in, in the art of warfare. Remember, he was he was basically CIA for his country. Right? Yeah, but if you send any type of nuclear Donald war Trump, to us, it's You could play with a Donald you. Trump. But the thing is, I think Putin was intelligent enough to know the sickness of a Donald Trump. To know, like, this nigga's irrational. He'll fuck around and nuke us, clean the fuck off the earth. America will do it. No, I get that. But you got a lot more leeway. And you can kill a lot more people and cover it up and do a lot more dirty things, unfortunately, with the Joe Biden type president. Yeah. But they're still going to get to a point. Here's what I'm saying. If any missile is launched at America, nuclear or otherwise, from Russia, America will wipe Russia off the face of the planet. And it's sad. And I don't even like. And it's yeah, sad yeah, to that's be talked facts. about yeah. because the people there, the majority of them, aren't the the what? How would you, would you say eight ninety percent of them aren't the issue? Well, I say ten percent would be the army and the one percent, right? This is the thing. I hear so much negative from foreign countries about Americans and America. Mm-hmm. The I I just sometimes dwell on the hypocrisy of it all. Right. Right. So. We live in so-called the greatest nation on earth, allegedly, right? Mm-hmm. Whether they agree or whether people just say that, but that's something that's said often about America, the most powerful nation, right? We'll say that. Um, so they think that like living in the belly of the beast of the most powerful oppressive government, mm-hmm. that we're supposed to just be able to keep fighting them, keep directing changes and stuff like that because of our system of democracy that we fight to uphold. I don't be hearing a lot. I either hear rose gold stories that's not realistic about America or that we don't do enough to like help other world issues. And like, I just don't think, I, me personally, I always say this. I said this when I was a child in school and got kicked out of class for it. I think America's role or the idea that America should go fix other nations' problems. It's bullshit. I think it's white supremacy in disguise. Yeah. That's oh, just, yeah, it just gives you a reason yeah, to go over there. Yeah, it just gives you a reason to go over there, shit. fuck up their shit, take whatever you want from it. No nation has really ever just been happy after we came and gone. Like, they don't ever just be like, man, if the Americans didn't come, boy. You know, you might get some. Don't get me the wrong. The Jewish people in fucking World War II. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. But it takes a long time to get over there and start helping them uh, to helping them out. Yeah, but if you want to talk about that, who really was helping? Right. The motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, was looking like us. Them you know what I'm saying, them Buffalo soldiers and shit like that that was going over there really doing their thing. And uh I think people should stop and think about that more. You had foreign nations offering surrender status and freedom to black soldiers mm-hmm. during the World War. And black soldiers still fought for their homeland. And then went home and couldn't use none of the rights of the, of the GI Bill because they were black. Right. And then went home and couldn't eat in certain places or work certain places and still, you know, you, yeah. still get their ass whooped or shot and killed by the cops and you know, all that type of stuff. It's just a funny place that we live in. Because a lot of people think that because I speak about a lot of geopolitical things, that a lot of people are hitting me about this Ukrainian shit. And I be like, yo, do you pay attention to the shit that I be talking about? Right. Or the shit that I be posting? I'm not really versed on, 
I don't want to sound ignorant, but I don't have time. You telling me I got to keep up with why two white nations don't like each other too? And both of them unilaterally agree that my black ass shouldn't be nowhere over there? Like, how selfish is that, fam? <laughs> and I'll be wondering if some of my friends is like, man, like are they joking with me? Man. Like, why you keep asking me about this shit? Like, why you keep sending me articles about you showing Ukrainian women like crying, holding their children? I'm like, bro, do you know how many, are we, you wanna play the image for image game? Yeah, let's don't do that. You don't I, wanna do that. I'm almost numb to seeing a woman hold a child in fear, crying and screaming, no matter the color. That. Yeah. So that's the reality of it. So when we talk about these things, we ain't really trying to have a conversation, you know? And I'm I'm at this stage. How you say it, like when you said off camera, you was like, bro, I'm just ready to, it's gotta be go time, right? It's go time. What we doing? What we doing, bro? It's go time, right? What we doing? Stop talking about that shit on TV every day. Go send some hitters over there to knock Putin's ass off. Or leave it alone. All the little cute shit niggas is doing with the sanctions and the, because what they're saying is like, hey, hey, America, since we're still built and founded in white supremacy, we have to support our white supremacist brother, but that don't look good. So let's just all bear down a little bit and pay more for gas and deal with this inflation. Like while we just hit him with the sanctions that we know he gonna ignore. Right. And Meanwhile, this motherfucker one of the richest motherfuckers on earth. Yeah, he ain't worried about your fucking he don't sanctions. Give a fuck about nothing, bro. You can't. I heard Floyd say it. He was like, it was some fight. I can't remember, but they was like, oh, it was a rough fight. He was like, yeah, man. You know, well, he's a he's a great boxer too. So I fought him. And he said, what do you what, what, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, you fight a boxer, and you box a fighter. Yeah. They out here trying to like. They playing with Putin. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, Putin been fucked around and hurt some people. Like, he's already hurting people. So it's like, it's either that you, we don't stand for this. Because when we go in the other nation, like, we had to jump over there with Saddam and them because Saddam was just so bad to Iraqis. He was over there trying to fuck Remember? Al-Qaeda up. Oh, Gaddafi uh, was torturing his people. Nigga, Gaddafi had some of the most pleasantly left people on earth. Nigga, they loved that nigga. He was a fucking president. In a country full of millions that didn't have a Secret Service regime. Yeah. This motherfucker was riding around in a drop top, nigga, and everybody was kicking it. Like, nigga, like, with bread and, like, they had, like, dog, that government was thriving. Yeah, Libya did not look bad before we did what we did. And now look at what happened. Now look at that shit. We went over there and fucked their whole world up. Probably got a lot of oil. Mm. But I asked the American people, you really think? We don't got enough oil and just the reserves alone for everybody to live off 99 cent gas a gallon for the next 20, 30, 40 years. If you don't think so, you're a fucking idiot. It ain't about that. It's about people trying to get off of like the gas being the like most deciding thing to the dollar. What is Every the country that tried to do that, like Saddam and them, they we went in there. I'm not talking shit. about them. Hear me close, my bro. You're right because you're, that's a great point. And that's the counterpoint that I'm making. You're absolutely right. But that's why I'm talking to American oil. people. <laughs> I'm talking to the people that's, that that supposedly supports and run and dictates the government, the officials that's in place, that knock off these people because they doing that. I really believe. When you look at, like, men, when you look at Gaddafi's uh, gold denom, so it was like a, a gold debit card or no it's that not was the, in the weight i mean it's not the oil it's the gold. they trying to take them they try to leave the gold standard no no like the country does they, I, okay i'm glad okay yeah. both of them both are true mm. but and and with the gold d now that's probably what triggered that is that mm. what Gaddafi had mastermind is hey all these new european games of playing with numbers and paperwork and all this type of stuff and technologies and we're not going to recreate the wheel so while the United States and the EU was literally ponding off gold, getting rid of gold, that's so ancient, right? I had coaches telling me, we used to watch the draft, watch the draft one of my coaches' office. This nigga told me straight up, he was like, Keen, man, if you ever get drafted. Whole chat. Man, I don't ever want to see you up here, man. Any of my guys, if any of you all ever got drafted, I don't want to see you up there. Well, look at all that gold they got on. And to me, I'm thinking to myself, this dude is a millionaire. He got bread. 
So when you, I don't really know more about bread than him, right? But I'm still thinking to myself, like, you think they pay for that, coach? Like, is your mind that small? Or do you think that little of said person that you think that this motherfucker Number was going to be draft on TV with 100 million people watching him and he didn't have – no one around him to think, hey, you want to watch? Okay, well, which one of you designers uh, want to be seen on primetime TV? Yep, that suit. He ain't All of that. that. Suit. I'm like, if you think. They got a Tom Ford suit now, on. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of these niggas get drafted and then get in a hole with their agent. Yeah. Because they get a house, nigga, get this. Get, okay. But we if you think draft on draft man. night right. that that nigga really paid for that suit and that big ass watch. He is wearing a Tom Ford and that one of one. Come on, fam! Like, like in private. <laughs> that's but that's the that's the thing though. Like that's where certain cultures breed certain different innovations and certain different thought patterns, right? Right. So, I just always thought that was funny. Now, hindsight, I wanted to call him during that cadaver shit. Like, yo, man, I thought you said it was gold was bad because now it was a time for like five years that every other commercial, if you watch television, was like, do you have any gold laying around? We'll, yeah. we'll buy that shit. If it's broke, we don't give a fuck. Just bring it here, and then we'll give you some money for it. Yeah. Because when you look at the gold reserves, like we had basic, we were poor when it came to gold and silver mm -hmm. and copper. We were a poor nation at one point in time. But guess who wasn't? Guess who had like 60% of the world's gold? Africa. Gaddafi. Oh, uh, yeah. He made... The gold denom was like a debit card. It looked like without the card mm -hmm. uh, fractions on it, it's like a thin sheet of gold that's worth its weight in gold. So if you had fifty dollars, that was fifty dollars worth of gold. If you had a hundred dollars, that's a hundred dollars worth of gold. Yeah. So it was actually backed by its own mm -hmm. reserve. Reserve, yeah. like so. Well, yeah, and then and it's because that's what they're fighting putting and it this in is, ours. So this is what he did. This is what got, in my opinion, got Gaddafi killed. He decided this is going to be an Afro-Arabic currency mm -hmm. because we don't have a universal one. Yep. We're going to all ditch our other ones. We're going to put into this. And America and Europe can bid for the remaining 10%. Yep, and that fucks up our dollar. That would have made America, either one of us would have damn near been on third, third world, world status. Yep. So a lot of people don't understand, like, damn, they had to – when people even be pro, oh man, they kill Gaddafi, that's fucked up. I'd be like, yeah, it is fucked up, but I ain't want to be a third world country. Nope. And I didn't make these rules, right? I, this ain't the game that I made. Yeah, we built the gold standard. I wanted to be just chilling somewhere, living, you know what I'm saying, uh, indigenous culture somewhere. That's what I'd rather be doing. Yeah, Ameri but, hey, but, America, but we ain't yeah, on that time. American built this gold standard, <laughs> so that's why we're so affected by it when something happens. So that's why it annoys me sometimes when people act like, oh, this Ukrainian shit. It's just the worst thing ever because I'd be like, bro, do you understand what this government has done in the last 20 years mm -hmm. to people, right? But it bothers me and it worries me because I start saying, is it only because people only – because sometimes people will be like, maybe, Akeem, you're passionate about some of these things because you're black. These are black issues. These are black people. You're only worried about the Ukrainian shit with the racism because they're black people. You just care about black people. No. Because we started this shit off when it first happened. Like, man, that Ukrainian shit is fucked up. Yep. Not a black person on TV in sight. And it was like, oh, that's fucked up, man. They just want to live their own life and be their own country. It's like it's like the dude that, like, stalks the girl when she don't want to be with him no more. Yep. That's like, bro, exactly what it leave is. Leave her yeah. alone, my nigga. Like, she don't, she, she don't want to be with you no just more. Terrorize her. Everybody understands, and we all agree unilaterally, that dude's a loser. Mm. Russia's being a loser. And Putin's being a loser, and he's not as strong as our media would like to act like he is. And it's not as complicated. It wasn't that complicated to go into a powerful nation like Libya and take out Gaddafi. Yeah. And that was no easy task. It wasn't easy to kill Saddam, uh, uh, Osama bin Laden. No. But I guarantee you a seven-man hit squad. You see, Lindsey Graham, I rarely, rarely agree with these old-ass proven-to-be-racist Republicans. Right. But fam, it's all, it's one thing that I I can't come in here and tell y'all I agree with. I just can't do it. I'll, you my man's, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but I ain't putting that stamp on myself. Because right. I know if something ever happened in life, they'll loop that shit and be like, look at him, see? Mm -hmm. Nah, y'all ain't playing me like that. But Lindsey Graham just came out and said, it was like, you know you know what, need, what really needs to happen? I just want people to understand how barbaric our country still is and the leaders of it, it still is. 
They asked Lindsey Graham, like seasoned vet, mm, right? Hey, well, 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 you know what, what? He's you know what? What needs to happen over Seven there? Seven man, his squad. And he was like, I think Russians need to assassinate Putin. Mm-hmm. They got all those billionaires over there. Like, won't they just pay somebody to knock them off? <laughs> but we like to paint this world. We like to act like this is a world. We get motherfuckers that's getting fired because they say shit, right? And we got elected officials suggesting to a whole country, nigga, hey, yo, kill your president. That's what I'm saying. Fam, what? <laughs> that ain't even a story. Like, niggas ain't even tripping on this nigga like that. Like, yeah, he might have a point. And went on about their day. But Whoopi had to go home for two weeks, fam. Right. What? Hold on. What did Whoopi do? She, she said, said like... that she believed that it was a difference between racism. She said that it, it had to be something else. She didn't even just deny that it was racism. I don't think it was racism. She said, she said, I don't think it's racism. She said, I don't think the Holocaust was about race. Now, one of her co-workers and friends who's a Jewish kind of looked at her and was like, oh, we're isn't it? Back. Now, this is something I do want to talk about. I'm glad you said this, because we're going to talk about this in our, in our culture. But it's the laziness of society where we will they try to feed this to us, and we can't ever buy into the fact that because you're white, you're in the same race, you're all just white, and you're all just black. Right. A lot of people in America don't even realize that Whoopi Goldberg is Jewish because right. she's black. Right. Yeah, right. Her last name is fucking Goldberg. But they, but, but a lot of black, a lot of white people are ignorant to our cultures, and they'll think that that's just because somebody in her family was owned by a motherfucker named Goldberg. Mm-mm. That's how a lot of people think we got our name, so they don't know that. So what happens is is you have the situation where Whoopi is like, well, she's saying the Holocaust, majority of the victims were white Jewish people. Mm. Now, we know history says about the black and other ethnic groups that was involved in the Holocaust that never gets written about. Okay, it's a, it's a strictly Jewish tragedy. Let's say we just follow it under that guidelines, right? Right. Well, Whoopi was saying, which I disagree with, she was saying that it wasn't about race because the Nazis were white. So she felt like it was more culturally. Actually, I don't even know if I disagree with her. I don't know. I, I, I reserve my opinion on it. More, no, no. It was more religion. like she thought, she thought it was more religion and yes, ethnic, ethno it, thing. Because right? um, Germany is a Christian, blue no, I get it. blonde hair country. And yeah, they felt like even though Hitler was, wasn't. They, yeah, they feel like that Hitler was Jewish. But well, that's, Allegedly, that's what they say, yeah. They say he nigga. He looked. He know, said whatever. he took out Jewish people because he realized how strong and shit they knew we were. Yeah, but still, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But still, I think that well, because with all that shit gets conflated and and, mm-hmm. and and deep and right, we can't. I get all that, but all I'm saying is, look at the minor. Even if it's somewhat insulting, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think Joy Behar, like, I think she heard that and was like, wait, what? And then she let Whippy finish. Now, she had the stank face while she was letting her finish, and rightfully so. She deserved that, right? But I don't even think Joy was that. I don't think she expected her to get suspended. Because then y'all talk about heavier shit, and we live in a country specifically. Now I'm going to shift it over to our peoples, to the FBA community, where, dog, I hear foreigners on TV that will openly say they moved to America within the last 10, 15 years and like there's some kind of anchor or a political figure or running up, running to be a political figure or they're doing something in entertainment. And I've heard people that says that and then they'll preface their comments by saying that and then go into what the black community needs to do <laughs> to like be a better community and shit like that. And, like, and it's just, it's, it's insulting, it's degrading, it's ignorant. It pisses you off. So I can understand any Jewish person, mm-hmm. right? Any Jewish identifying person that literally like heard that and was like, wait, what? Yeah. But if you stop for 30 seconds and hear what she's saying, even if you disagree, where do you really find the disrespect in that? Right. She wasn't being disrespectful. Y'all having a discussion. It's a bully mentality of cancel culture. Like, oh, well, whatever, she's canceled then, right? But we got a motherfucking elected official that just called for a nation to assassinate somebody. Their president, to be exact. Yeah. And I just thought that was weird that nobody was like, yo, 
Can't say that. What's wrong that. with him? Like, you can't, you. That. Like, you can't say that shit. He got that shit all smooth, fam. Smooth. And man. I was just like, damn, like, is that what y'all really be thinking? Don't tell me that that's what, nigga, civil rights, I be telling people all the time, like, bro, don't tell me they can't knock Putin off, right? Because who's a threat more to America? Putin or Martin Luther King? Martin Luther King. And that's what's crazy. And that's the thing that's crazy. Mm-hmm. And we can't ever lose sight of that. A Baptist minister in his fucking early 30s that was talking about bringing the country together in nonviolence, nigga, is literally more threatening to the American government than Vladimir Putin. Than Vladimir here. Putin, who allegedly has over 15 nukes pointed at several cities in our nation. Like, what are we talking about if we're not talking about the ending of white supremacy? Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep circling back to that because. The world needs to understand you don't benefit from that shit just because it's not at your door every day because it's all it takes. All it takes. You think the Jewish community Nigga, look at was your safe? Ga- look at your gas was prices safe with right the white now. supremacists and, and, and have, fuck the gas prices. Those Jewish people were white. And they had the same type of privileges, like, right? They wasn't in, in fear of being enslaved or anything like that. No, at the I'm moment. talking about as far as like people like thinking they're sheltered because it's not going on here. No, I'm talking about We're people t- thinking bigger. that because it's a white supremacist in, in charge oh. and they're white, that they're safe. Nigga, yeah. them Jewish people wasn't fucking safe. Not at Go all. read them Anne Frank diaries. She wasn't safe. Mm-hmm. And she's white. Her skin was white as snow. Yeah. So those people in Ukraine that thought because you done got away, we don't do our little thing over here. Hey, bro, why, why, why are we not fighting this year round? Right. Why are we waiting for him to storm a country, dog. I seen motherfuckers coming out their bakery job, nigga, like running down on tanks and shit. Like that ain't supposed to happen, right? And that's what made me think about earlier. I'm like, bro, that they better hope that never happens in America. It's just gonna be a bloodbath. It's gonna be ugly. You not gonna know who to shoot or who to shoot at, fam. No, nope. bullets going everywhere. Cause you gonna have some Americans joining the opposition. You're going to have some Americans shooting at the opposition, and you got some Americans shooting at each other, man. You're going to have white people just hunting niggas. You're going to have niggas hunting white people. You're going to have oh fucking, you're going to have all type of, of because we haven't really <laughs> sat down as a collective society and been like, this and is fixed America. Any you know of our issues. Right. What our government likes to do, and certain fragments like to do, is they like to bring in a foreign class to muddy up the waters and to use them against. You know what I'm saying? A more foundational class of people that goes back centuries and centuries here. And then what happens is, this is like, oh man, y'all living over here in this free ass country and y'all ain't made it rich yet? Y'all just lazy. In my country, we don't got this, 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 and this. It's a clusterfuck mm-hmm. in, in communication and understanding. And the fucked up thing is, everybody that got something to say about the story could be right. Right. That's where it actually gets fucked up. Right. Like, I'm not saying, I'm, I don't know. I don't got the answers, nigga. Everybody could be right. I don't got the answers. Maybe everybody should just get a gun. Maybe, maybe the Wild Wild West had it figured out. Like, hey, bro, gun makes you the king of your castle. Yeah. S- niggas, protect your fort. If niggas got, a, if niggas got an issue, <laughs> high, high protect your fort, man. High noon. High, protect your fort, bro. Nigga. High, yeah. Nigga. Nigga, protect your fort, bro. One on ones, nigga. Because, dog, you know what I'm looking at? Now there's a certain segment of our culture that is gun. We we are gun crazed nation. Like we ain't gonna act like oh, I'm sure. never gonna give them the credit to act like some European nation just oh they went and got their arms and nigga what you think America's gonna do? Niggas is gonna have guns and you'll be surprised when they start looking at the when when the, when the, the green light go and the kids in the hood really can pull out the arms that they really got. Oh my god! And, and not fear going to jail for it. Some niggas sitting on RPGs, Bruh. and shit. Bro. I'm telling you right now, I man, it's niggas grenades. out there with grenades and all yeah. type of shit in the hood. Don't be surprised by that. Nigga can't wait to go outside and do the Rambo. And get the green light? Man, come on, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. And then not to mention, you got like the Appalachian South and uh, in the different places like a, you know, you got like a different type of white person that lives in a different region, right? Mm-hmm. They gun heavy, like I'm, I'm shooting something. You got a different type of black person that live out in the Midwest, big backwoods and different places like that where they got their gun in their hand every day anyway, shooting something, skinning it a lot. They doing, they, 
and they know the terrain. Mm, oh yeah. We know the cities. Yeah. They gonna be out on the terrain knocking shit off. Like how they just out on the outside of Ukraine, mm. they wouldn't be able to do that in America, fam. Nope. You would have American citizens out there lining their ass up, nigga. They would have to use all their ammo, nigga, just shooting niggas up off them. Mm. Like what the hell y'all coming in here doing what? Niggas on the roof. You going to a project in New York. Bro, imagine that shit. Holy shit. Imagine them coming in on a tank, niggas on the roof, dumping on them, niggas, doing all type of shit. This, I get it, but if we get to a point where the government is giving us arms, I'm just saying, bro. Oh, can you imagine? There's a lot of Americans Russia, that ain't gonna fight either, though. If Russia went to Chicago, see, this is the thing, bro. That's a bro. This is what I want people to really understand. See, there's a lot of people that's gonna hear us and think we're absolutely fucking bugging. They're gonna be like, are they, these, these are ignorant. Like, these are military, the Russian army. Oh my God. But they don't know our culture like that, bro. And I'm just telling you, that <coughs> they whole. They don't know the terrain like they that. Don't, I'm just telling you, y'all not coming in. That's why the police don't do that shit. You think, yeah, like, you think like, Russians are coming to The U.S. Up. government don't come into black certain you think, area you think, pockets. You think like Russia's no going in the O block? And, and. I mean, it's gonna be a fuck. They gonna probably fuck O Block up. I'm just gonna say they they probably would win. Yeah, but they gonna get given off the fact of like if they coming in with Russian military shit and they just got the O Block hood shit. But if we're in a situation like Ukraine where the government is driving down the street in tanks, giving off weaponry Mm -hmm. that's sufficient, boy, them niggas. Niggas can't wait to kill shit. They 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 gonna hey, I know in Detroit certain cities they've been a took a damn uh, tank. Oh yeah, I've been a commandeer oh, a yeah. tank from these niggas. And He's gonna knock off a whole platoon and take a tank. All nigga. them, all them soldiers on foot. Okay. You're not just walking into no American city with marching orders like we're coming to invade. You're gonna be getting shot at from everywhere, fam. Mm-hmm. Every Molotov cocktail, everyone niggas gonna be coming through trying to hit you with cars and shit. Don't know what the fuck is going on. We're the only place in the world that non-billionaire and non-like. Non like oligarchy type figures have bulletproof cars, man. Right. This is just a few of them in the hood. It's gonna be niggas that can really just jump in a bulletproof like nigga. Like niggas let's go. We spinning on trucks them. In the we hood, spinning nigga. on them. Niggas got Brinks trucks. And I'm shit. just saying, fam. I, I believe there's a couple billionaires here that got private little militaries. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And then not to mention all the vets that's here. Right. Right, nigga, please. Vets got arsenals, nigga. Most bro, of they them. be bugging. They be forgetting about our vets. Mm-hmm. We got some badass vets just working at the construction site, nigga. They ain't getting treated the best, but they'll come knock some shit off, dog. All For way. real. And they all stay ready because mm-hmm. all my vet homies is like that. My pops was like that. Boy, my pops looked every day like somebody was coming over these shores to come do something to us. <laughs> and he was ready. <laughs> Understand that. You was not pulling up without a fight. Uh, did you see the game Drink Champs? Mm-mm. You might want to check that out. It's kind of interesting. I ain't even going to lie. I was waiting for it to drop. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we need to talk about the Whatchamacallit one, too. The digital one. Um, Damn, I want to watch that. Yeah, me too. Slaughterhouse. Have you seen any of that? I'm up on that. We definitely need to talk about that. Yeah, what's going on with them? With that? Um, First off, I'm going to say this as the non-artist. Let me just get my shit off because I'm going to let you ride this one. All right, I'm going to smoke real quick. I'm right here. Fuck all my favorite rappers that join in the different collectives and then do some rapping ass nigga shit and just can't say suck it up and just pause and just put out an album. You niggas don't got to like each other. You niggas don't got to be friends. Just give me rap. But that being said, I understand. I'll let you take it, man, when you get back. But, like, that shit's nuts to me, dog. Like, how do you feel about uh, airing out? I think. I think it's corny because you only get a certain perspective. And one thing that I. This is the person that I'm going to take side no matter what in this collective. And that's Royce's. Because Royce has proven that he's the least emotional, he's the most rational. And he's the most loyal. And the nigga Roy said it like, bro, y'all niggas tried to snake Joe. Y'all didn't expect Joe to, to be willing to do the album. 
But Joe was on some fuck shady shit. I'm never recording with them niggas again. They fucked us. And until y'all willing to admit that they fucked us over there because that's Eminem's label and nobody can speak bad about Eminem and keep their career. Until y'all willing to admit that shit, I ain't going over there. Because y'all had me on a limb looking, acting like I'm the only one tripping. I get why Royce don't jump off the porch. That's your boy. Y'all stopped talking for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Y'all relationship just getting back right. Y'all wasn't even speaking. And Royce basically was like, we can't get the right kind of deal with the right kind of freedoms. There's only one person that really respect kind of what we doing Damn. that's in that position that's going to really pay, put and some energy going, into yeah. it. We can go sit down with a hove. He'll give us a deal, but nigga, he ain't about to push us. He ain't jumping on a record, and we not opening for him. Here's where, here's where um, I, feel, I feel both sides. Look at the standstill I'm in with my brother. Totally different in my opinion. You feel, it? you feel like it is? And I'm going to tell you why. Just real quick, I'll tell you why. One, there well, was a... Wait, let me add this to it. D was trying to... Is talking retirement like Joe is. That's the thing. That's what. That's what I said about Royce. What Royce is saying, and that's where him and Joel Ortiz got in that argument with Joel, mm-hmm. when Joel buzzed in the line. He said it right in front of Joel Ortiz's face. He was like, bro... Y'all don't want to tell the public that the deal that y'all tried to backdoor and get, and if you look at it, Royce is getting money still. Royce yeah. is putting out music that's responding. He he didn't really need it as much. Mm-hmm. Joe's up. He don't really need it. Those two niggas is kind of solid a little forward. They kind of probably need a little project. They need to be torn at. So we get it, but he was just like, bro, we're not desperate. Right. We ain't never been that. Royce said the deal that they came with them with was ass. But Royce was like, it's not like we need it, but we ain't getting raped, but we can get more. And I ain't really like thinking that's the best deal. But if that's what y'all went and got, it's kind of weird y'all shopping deals without us. But y'all went and got this deal. Okay, that's fine. Let's run it by Joe. We do the Zoom call. We send. He's like, how every other deal we had, send it to the lawyers. They do that. No, nah, this ain't really going to work. And right. honestly, they lying. They went and pitched a deal without Joe. Pitching that on the strength of like, oh, we're going to do this nigga in the slaughterhouse shit, nigga. Yeah, it's going to be three. With us three. Right, And we're going right. to shit on Joe because Joe's right. name is hot in the algorithms. That's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. And you know Royce ain't standing on no weird shit. Royce was like, bro, that's corny. We're not doing right. that. And he said, nigga, what he thought, he said, I knew it was some funny shit. And I told Joe, I think some funny shit going on. He said, because I don't think these niggas are expecting you to be wanting to rap. But if you've been listening to his pod for the last year or two, he's been itching to rap again, right. nigga. and you know that's gonna happen. Right. My money's right. It really would have happened. It don't with matter if I sell or not. Here's here's where they fucked up. Period. You you I. It's like our situation. I can't. And me and my brother. I can't shop a deal without you. I can't shop deals without D. I still, at the end of the day, they signed the deal. I, at the end of the day, I still have to run it by you. All right. Cause ATS doesn't just be, that name right. don't just belong to me. So it's like the me Dowdy running brothers. It's me don't get, just belong to me. It's me getting a deal, calling you on some shit like, hey, bro, I know you making you know the studio. I know you zoned in on this album and yeah. whoop, 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 you doing this. You got these videos. And me booked. sending it to the lawyer. My but, lawyer saying it's bullshit. But it's kind of like, bullshit. Nah, but you know, but you it. still being like, you know what? This is our first deal off of Shady. We just went through a whole bunch of shit to get off Shady, right? Let's just put something out real quick. It's a one shot joint. We get all the rights, so it's it's not we can get more. It's not mm-hmm. that it was just a bad deal. It was like nigga, or, we or can do like, better than or that. Or it's like you and Dio. No, hold on, wait, no stop. But he said no, wait. But he says it ain't what I think we should get. I think y'all bugging, mm-hmm. but it's cool. If everybody sign off on it, I'm good. Yeah, and Joe, right. And then it's just like, Joe's oh no, too- no, no. Then it's like everything's good. So then I'm like, okay, we we set a Zoom meeting. To start getting our creative flow. Okay, when we going to book? Where we want to record at? Where we want this to go? Where are we taking this? And it's like, yo, where's Joe? And it's like, nigga, I don't know. But nigga, they got a friendship. Mm-hmm. So he hit the nigga. This is what I'm seeing off the live I'm watching. He hit the nigga and Joe was like, what you talking about? Like, nigga, no. He's, I told the nigga to send me the contract. He never sent it. So now when Joe finally gets it, he's like, oh, I'm not signing this. Yeah, I'm This is stupid. Too. Like, why the fuck why would, would I, would I do, do this? this? He was like, yo, if this is the only thing y'all can get. This is going to take time from my You understand my I work with Puff, right? Right. I, I probably can go get us a deal over here, nigga. I, can, I, I call Hove Here's what I say. Hold on. I, I keep forgetting to land with this. <laughs> Have Joe fucking do it. Joe is up. Joe has enough money that nigga... 
Nigga, write the contract for your four. Write the contract for Slaughterhouse. You be the publisher. You be the distributor. Nigga, you gonna you gonna do everything in house with well, what bro, Joe's money is. That's the fight of like. Slaughterhouse. Joe has been saying, "Let's do this shit independent." I fuck right. fuck labels, and Royce has had to live in an impossible space. I'm Eminem's best friend, but I don't have no perks from that. None. All I do is everything I do that's dope. Nigga say I got it because of him. Yeah. Like or you I'm know, what I'm saying, defending this nigga against I'm, something, and then or and, he and hits then me for some when the culture, the when the black through. culture questions Eminem about something, I, I gotta speak for that, it. Right, like you know, what so, I'm saying, I gotta throw the darts. But, like, like if they were smart, I'm using Joe as the conduit. I'm using Joe as the machine, and Joe, from what he's saying, it's jealousy there. Would have no fuck. The niggas need to stop. Fuck all that bullshit. Stop saying you just want to rap. Then you have too much of an ego. My ego will be out the door when I know you are hundred m's up. What? How many? Is it a couple hundred m's? Yeah, well, up? I don't know what it was. He got something nice going on. Okay, he's at least a hundred m's up, right? I know you have the machine I need that we need to make this pop. Ain't no fucking jealousy and ego in that well, because at the end of the day. You're still going to be more up than me, but it's still going to be a 25% split. Well, no, I feel what you're saying. They got it. They own it 25 all the way through, right? So, so regardless, but, Joe's going to recoup. No, like what it is, would. it's relationships. Like, that's See, just like, dumb, bro. I think some of them is intertwined in Eminem's management still. You're not on a label, but you still got the same manager. And they are mad. At Joe for exposing certain things. Then it's now time to choose the culture. Up. Now the culture is kind of looking at him, kind of like, eh, bro, you really don't do good by nobody. You're with the niggas can do with it without you at this point. You, I mean, what did you get from it? Right. You can be we're, nigga like you're gonna go down as one of the best rappers ever. But at this point, we don't need you. We can. We're done with you. Well, you just ha you just have you just you haven't proven yourself to be in that like Suge Knight hove. I mean, he's still baby he type just, space. He, he just got a feature could, like, with who? Like, you like people the, like, are featuring you, but where I could put you in a um because it's more it's more for them than anything. Yeah, it's, niggas a, it's don't, a good look for them. We're not waiting for your stands are, right. but our culture for the for the whole right. We're not waiting for the next Eminem album. Right. We're waiting for the next Slaughter. So what happens? Album. Exactly. So what happens? Nigga. That's where you get into Joe's bag. If you go back and look at the, look at the shit when him and Eminem was beefing, Bruh. and he addressed it on his pod, he said that he's like, "Dare I say it? Niggas are gonna say I'm crazy." But he was just like, "I'm way I felt more like, looking for a slaughter." I felt like it was some hate album. going on. He was just like, "Bro, I felt like niggas was paying attention to us opening up around the world yeah. and seeing the 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 reaction of it and seeing." And he said, yeah, "Bro," and he was just nigga, like. The one slot, the slaughterhouse mixtape, and the, the one album, it's fire, two of the bro. best shits ever released. Nigga. It's fire, bro. Them niggas was and going it, in. And, and and from an Eminem fan, Eminem, yeah, you were jealous, cause nigga, that. that Why would you force all your beats on them? Yeah, that was a hot ass. This what, I told her. I'm arguing with a stand the other day about the shit. I'm like, fam, four of the best rappers. I told son from I'm, four different cities. They have the they have the rap, city that the country nigga, locked like, up. Come on, bro. fam. Look, like, I told him. I told him straight up. I told him, boy, yeah, I'm like, I didn't even think about the fan bases. You have every bear locked and every realm of hip hop locked, nigga. I told the nigga, I'm like, bro, of course, Eminem. You got to understand, because he was like on that, yeah, right. You tripping? I'm like, dog, you got to understand. I'm like, who the fuck is Eminem as a producer to think that he gets to produce a slaughterhouse album, fam? Now fuck that, Joe. I know you ain't watching this. I'm gonna jump out on limb and say some shit that you would say, but it's very true, nigga. I don't feel like the well, rap nigga looking at you crazy when you say he should pay for it. Like nigga, what? <laughs> no, because I don't think so. Because it gives him the whole independent route. It makes him one hundred percent in I control. I think you're making it sound easier because no, no, no. It is easier said than done. I get that. There's still and a it's lot because more egos and, and opportunity that's where the and all ego that. That's what I'm that's talking what I'm about. Saying. You got to get rid of the ego, and that's not always going to happen. But none of them, none of them, other three niggas are in the position that Joe Budden is in right now. They're not. Which and is I, crazy. And there's no, ego to, there's no ego in that. That is straight paper Which, facts. Black and white. Joe has more money than all three of them niggas combined off of this podcast shit. So honestly, nigga. Um, I don't. That I mean, Hulk, it seems like that, real. bro. I'm not trying to be funny. I, I don't it's know. It's not even being. No, no you're right. Real, no, just I'm, not, I'm not arguing with you, bro. I'm just trying to like. 
I'm just trying to catch up with you, with, like in your, like in your thinking about sales, it. Even in probably, he's probably done. No, more. he was the top seller. Right is what I'm saying. It bro. was some so, jealousy there, bro. Like so I'm not so even gonna lie. Motherfuckers can't be jealous because there's always gonna be a David Ruffin of a group. There's always gonna be a Michael Jackson of a group. There's always gonna be a Prince. But there's this group like, wasn't built on that. There's always gonna be Amigos. There, the, it isn't. It, it and isn't, the thing is, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day. You gotta be comfortable There's in your own going skin, to bro. Be favorites of whoever's gonna be. That's what I'm saying. If of. I put you in, if I'm like, yo, bro, I got an opportunity to manage this another group. I'm gonna put you in it, nigga. It's four mega producers, nigga. We gonna be the new hit squad, the hitmen. Right. We gonna be the new hitmen, nigga. Right. And I might and be then, the dopest and straight trapping hip hop. Right. And then somebody else. Might be the but hold on. But then, but shit. then all three of y'all are underground stamp. Yep. Not underground and following y'all all buzzing y'all all eating right, but your underground stamp niggas in the in the in the mud fuck with y'all right, yep. but one of y'all it's just that nigga one of y'all signed a bad deal mm-hmm. that made him do one bubblegum song that he ain't even want to do and it became a cult classic hit that's in movies and all that so because of that. He has a, he has a, 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 a string to, of a goes, pop following this goes to T, that none of y'all this have. This goes to TGT. Nope, the other two niggas didn't feel like Genuine should have got paid more. Genuine has more hits, has sold more records, and is least drops talented. More panties, right? But still, but is least talented. It is. I get and that. That's funny, I right? get that. Don't but, write. But, but these the, niggas but, is writing but, the songs, but, nigga. But when niggas is coming to show, but not niggas, but when these females are coming to these shows, Genuine brings a different energy, bro. Right. Most of them are coming to see. Genuine, Genuine. brings a non-fan energy. Extra. He brings a non-fan energy. Hey, and fuck Genuine, man, because he touched my girl's butt one time. None of you niggas but, have a pony song. What well, ex girl? It don't matter. None nigga. of you niggas Get shit got off Genuine. But, Tank or Tyrese don't have a pony. Oh, I don't know though. Nigga, t- sweet what? lady. It's no. I don't know. Hold dog. on. Hold Le- on. I don't know. I'm going. No. Let me. Let me take it to the. Ah, remi- let me take shit. it to the remix EDM world. Let me take it to the grand scale. Niggas still remix pony. Niggas ain't remixing and touching no, you're right. sweet lady. No, you're right, and, fam. And, you're right. No. Uh, it's sh- not a better song than Sweet Lady, no, but it's a it's a it's, it's a, a hit. it's a it's, it's a, a better it's a, it's a pump it's a pump it up. Yes, there it is. It's a pump it up. There it is. That's exactly nigga, pump it up what isn't it is. isn't a top one hundred oh. fucking Joe Button song. No, but it's a top one hundred song. But it's necessary in every social setting. Exactly. And I guess that's what it really is. Like make a song that's necessary in every social setting, and yep. you're gonna dare I say always win. Look at the Humpty Dance. Do the Humpty Hump. Yeah, that shit still slap. It ain't the. It is not Shock G's best body work. Or you got to make something. It's not Digital Underground's best body work. That penetrates a season. No, that's right. You're right, though. But that motherfucker's still playing to this date. But it has a story to it, too, though. Yeah. Who made up the Humpty Dance? It's on commercials. Who made the Humpty Dance? Shock G. Who made the Humpty Dance? Oh, Tupac, right. So yeah. because of that, who's in the video right. before he has his ascension as one of the right. top rappers of all time? That's what I'm it's saying. just that like, shit got storylines to it. You know what I'm saying? And to it's still played to this day. And the song was it's slapping still, back then. Yeah, like it was in a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right, you fam. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So sometimes you gotta stop looking at his writing coattails and look at it as your fucking And team. you know what it is? Not everybody's LeBron. When you're a solo and you go into a group, right. you're used to those cheers being strictly for you. Not everybody's LeBron. Yeah, but LeBron make everybody feel but like it, they is, though. But it doesn't matter. You still have to, at the end of the day, run that offense through him. Yeah, but Joe, Joe ain't ain't wasn't graceful with it either. Because Joe saying, is Joe. I'm not, I'm not saying so, that. No, either. no, I'm so saying in a bad say, way. Okay, no, hold on, so let me finish. Say, let me finish. So, so I'm not saying in a bad way. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Nah, that nigga extra wasn't graceful. I'm just saying. I'm not saying in a bad way. What I say, what I mean when I say that is, yeah. nigga, take it. It's you. We two producers. We in a group. But nigga, you spinning right now. You on making the beats and shit. You got the club popping. They own you. Hey, this week, they own you. Some niggas ain't cool with that. And I, you you know niggas like this. We all know niggas that unless the bitches are screaming for them, they not into it. They hating. They don't like it. If none of the girls in this party like you, nigga, it's why. If you see any of us chopping it up with a little shorty in the mix, you going to come over like, man, this shit whack. These bitches in here ugly. Yeah. You know that lame dude. Yeah. That's what this is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
That is it's like elements of that. And so I don't know, bro. Like you right though. That shit was genuine and it was a great point. But let's keep it real. Eminem, you're a jealous dickhead. Cause you know, without a shadow of a fucking doubt, if on the same day, right now, Slaughterhouse released and M released, Slaughterhouse will win. <sighs> I would put bread on it. I'd put the future of our show on it. Damn, Slaughterhouse bro. would outsell M that day, nigga. Cause how long have we been waiting for a Slaughterhouse album? And how have hey, we bro, had, and how I, many and M albums have we had since the Slaughterhouse? And I heard album? the shit was. The thing is that like that. The thing about them Slaughterhouse joints, bro. Like, it's like them niggas really had a chance to rival any rap group. They were a super group, bro. This is what I was gonna say before I got cut off. Shit. Had Eminem pushed them right, not been a jealous dickhead. I don't know if the Migos would have been what the Migos were. I think hip hop would have never chose made that shit. They'd have like chose that. Slaughter for sure. Like yo, well look, it definitely would have put a lot more pressure on them and and, tra- and changed their trajectory because they're able to get it. They able to get like compared to like the locks and shit like that now. Whereas if Slaughter was around, we're, I know. I know, bruh. I know. And another thing that people don't realize, and Joe, and uh, that's one thing that uh, Royce the Nine said it. Royce Five Nine said it, and I was kind of shocked he said that so freely and openly. But he was like, "Man, and you gotta understand, they mad." But I had to tell them, brothers, like, do you understand what you're able to do off this man's fan base? He said Joe has a, a niche following that he built. That 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 all around the world. This nigga was just on tour his whole life. Like fuck it, I'm just gonna go get it. And now you got a you got you know you got a couple hundred fans in every city. So, especially as an artist, because I'm like, bro, that nigga is dope. This sounds morbid, and uh, you know, God bless these comments. I'm not putting that energy in the air. I'm using it as a as a no no as an example. I'm not saying none of that. Cause I don't even think that's the case with him, honestly. Cause his his last two albums that when he was sobered up on are two of his best albums. It's Cause there was more clarity and he wasn't ranting so much and he wasn't so angry. I take that back. Joe Budden ain't better on drugs. Eminem is at his best. On Eminem drugs. was definitely on his best on drugs. Eminem was better on drugs for sure. But damn, you made me lose my point. What was I gonna say? Uh, fuck. No, nah, it was before that. I was responding to you when I said that. It was. And then you said um, something about like, you know, Malice was out of the state and stuff like that. If Joe were like tragically passed away, the truth, tra- dog. What, what niggas would, uh, what the world would do, cause especially because of the internet, the way he's like a forefather of the internet and that, the way he is, the OG and internet shit. It would force people to go back and listen to his music. Bro, they'll be comparing that nigga to Tupac. Joe Think about Bud- the subject matter, his rap ability, mm-hmm. the product. If you go back and listen to that shit with true open ears. Joe is a goat. Bro. And the thing is, Joe that's Budden, funny. Joe Budden's Nicki Minaj is the one that checked time. him on that. Because he was like, he was trying to play dumb. He was like, nigga, it's me, nigga. Why niggas be acting like they tripping because I said something? And she was like, nah, nigga. You don't get to do that shit. She was like, Joe, I don't, we don't give a fuck what the fans think. Like, every rapper nigga knows your pen, nigga, and respects it. So when you say something about these niggas, they feel it different, nigga. Like, that's why everybody be wanting to get in the booth. Like, what, nigga? That'd be the same with him in the podcast space. He said your right. podcast was ass. You'd be like, bro. bro what you doing? Like, nigga, what? Bro, yeah, like, <laughs> don't say that, nigga. Like, what? So... It, it's our weird. friends could say our shit is trash all day, but he can, we'd be like, what? It's weird how, hurt? like, it's weird how... There's goats amongst us that like don't really occupy that space traditionally. You feel me? They don't occupy. Did I knock something down? Oh shit, my bad, my nigga. I'm over here knocking shit down. But they don't occupy the space traditionally. So it's like, you know, Charlemagne's a goat nigga in this media shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's some people with some weight that can you know move their weight around. It's crazy how that works, bro. But nah, they're uh, Joel and Cricket are definitely going about it a weird ass, some weirdo shit. 
I did want to get back on that. Uh, and I know this is jumping back, but I thought about you with that cameraman shit because, like, I know that you 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 do your thing with that camera. And Kanye's guy, it, when I watched that documentary, I found myself at times feeling somber for him. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, yay. But then I stopped and thought, and I was like, because I'm glad I had a break in between that last episode. And I thought about it more, and I was like, well, no, Ye was properly going through the evolution and doing everything he needed to do to become Ye now. Yeah. And he didn't owe nobody nothing. Nope. I and, don't uh, say I feel the same and way. And boy, owe and what old boy, this is everybody needs a Scooty, bro. You can't make it in this world in anything without a brother like that or a friend mm -hmm. like that, a family member like that, a girl, dude like that, that's willing to be like, yo, I can attach my greatness to yours mm -hmm. and support. He said it. Niggas was looking at me all the time like, bro, why are you just following this nigga around? You hot right now. It was a time he was more hotter than Kanye. Right. Recording Kanye. You know what I'm saying? And then look at the like, this is where niggas gotta understand the integrity. Mm -hmm. He told Ye, bro, I get it. You wanna do the Hype Williams shit. You a rapper, nigga, you finally got a chance. To... He's like, but you know what's gonna happen. You gonna call a nigga in the morning. He's like, cause you gonna get there, Ye, wanting to do Ye shit, mm -hmm. and it's Hype Williams, and he gonna have his own vision, and he hype. So he was like, nah, this is how I'm doing it, nigga. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And he was like, you gonna call me, and I'm about to get on a plane and fix it, nigga, like. He's like, so go ahead, do what you do, my nigga. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. You know what I'm saying? But then it comes to a point where he's just like, you know, I ain't never heard Ye get into this bag on camera or in front of certain people. Right. So I'm cutting this shit off. Nigga, Ye was in there dropping jewels. Mm -hmm. I wanted to hear what the fuck he was saying. He said, nope. That nigga was like, nah, I'm not. We're going to let my nigga have a moment. Mm -hmm. Bro, What I'm, all I'm trying to say is we gotta build the connective chain because if you don't have the right people around that have that kind of energy, fam, there's certain shit, you my mans, I don't have, there's certain shit I'ma know. Nigga, you don't gotta tell me you don't want that on camera. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, hold on, what we doing? Watch out, nigga, like, get this people out of here. <laughs> hey, get them people up out of here. Right. Like, who's that? Like, you know what I'm saying? There ain't time yet. But when you have people that's a hired gun, mm -hmm. girl, come on. That's where the tragedy, that's where the fall. That's where the fall happens. When you start hiring out of your circle because this motherfucker was an assistant for so-and-so already, or this motherfucker was uh, managing so-and-so, and this motherfucker was doing that. Nah, nigga. Nah. If anything, collaborate with them with your team. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll pay you a consultant fee. I ain't gonna sign with Well, look what manager. LeBron's doing with Rich. LeBron is the blueprint right. look for all of his friends. Rich, Maverick, yeah, all of them. Look at all the, all all five the companies of them. he helped build with his circle. Nigga. All five of them. They're all multi, multi millionaires. Don't need to ask LeBron for shit. They can get on a private jet and go wherever the, wherever fuck, they the want. fuck they and want. And more importantly, they're all extremely dominant and respected in, in their, their field. Fields, yep. They ain't LeBron's homies. That's why he checked Pat Riley, and Pat Riley apologized for that shit. Like, bro, don't ever call them my posse, Yeah, because Rich ain't no posse. Rich is a whole. Maverick ain't either, nigga. Rich and Maverick. None of these niggas Rich is. ass niggas. None of them bro. are. They <laughs> all run multi-million dollar businesses. Because uh, Maverick's the uh, the multimedia company owner, right? And then Rich is the Rich agent. Rich is the agent. And then uh, the other two, two of the other ones What's that played high school ball with them. They, uh, this uh, Clutch. Clutch, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they, they doing their thing, bro. And Rich has, like. Like ten of the hottest. Rich and LeBron, like the Clutch has them. Cause Clutch has who? Fucking Le LeBron the balls, right? AD, uh, he has one of them. Lonzo Ball. Okay. Um, the other two, the other, they they Rock Nation. They were Hove. That's how you got the pool. Hove is a fool, bro. Hove is that guy, that nigga, bro. He the dog. Hove is that nigga that just really. Hove's the dog, nigga. That when you come in the party and realize it's dope, he already leaving. Like yeah, yeah nigga, it's in here. Yeah. He already leaving though. Like yeah, nigga, it's in here. When he you're just, thinking about trying to get signed to Rock Nation, he already done sent the fucking contract, nigga. It's like real talk, bro. <laughs> that's how he got the Puma deal. That's hey, how he, that's how he out, laced him up. You know what I'm about to shout out Jay right now, too? He gave him that Puma deal, that Jet, You heard nigga. about what he did, how that whole NFL shit ended up breaking down, right? Snoop broke it down. Basically, fucking Jay-Z said, you going to let them do the show how they want to do the show or rock nation and i are walking away from the nfl right now then he calls snoop 
and said, "Wear and do what the fuck you want to do." And nigga, he that's was, why them niggas out there yeah, sea walking, yep. nigga, on TV, like, hey. Jay Z said, "Nigga, I will. Me and Rock, we're gone. Right, we bro. That's we dope. Terminate today. I ain't and know I that. Give a fuck. Shout out to Ho for that, bro. And that's what we need. You need power <laughs> players." <laughs> To put that to play to use their power, like basically, like nigga, like you need you me. need I power don't need players. You. I'm Rock Nation to play their power, bro. Don't we don't need you. you. Like as we much don't. as you think you don't need Jay, I really don't need hey, you. Hey, most watch Super Bowl halftime. That's because of us, right. nigga. That ain't because of y'all. No, y'all didn't think of doing this. Y'all didn't. Y'all didn't bring these people in. Y'all didn't do that. None of that. But yeah, Jay-Z. and it's about inclusion. Jay Z told you know what I'm saying? basically he told good not just black inclusion. Look at what he did at the last Super Bowl, all Latin yep. run up. Yeah, like nigga, no, they deserve that moment, yep. bro. Yeah, Jay Z hit good. Fuck out of here, said nigga. You don't do it how they want to do it. I, it's all our relationships terminated. That's crazy. That's dope though. That's, That's dope. That's nut hang, nigga. Imagine letting your nuts hang to the NFL. Like, nigga, oh, fuck you, bitch. I don't, I don't need you. Nigga. You know what's so crazy? You know what's so <laughs> But you know what's some real nut hang? Is to watch the public outcry for Colin Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. And be like, we'll pay this nigga. Right, yeah. We got bread, nigga. We'll pay this nigga before we let him play football. Because guess what? There's only one NFL. And you can't be an NFL quarterback unless you truly want to be an NFL quarterback. You have to study. You have to eat right. You have to work out. You have to practice. You have to get a strength and conditioning coach, a throwing coach. You have to get a quarterback coach to help you learn how to read defenses in place. Mm -hmm. These niggas put in the same amount of time to be an NFL starting quarterback as a fucking doctor. Yep. And they know that more than most. So they're like, no, nigga, cut your hand off. We're just going to take – you're never going to play – Right, you're never gonna do the one, and you're in your prime, and you're pretty good, and you're right. You were right on the cusp of really doing something, but that's cool. We're gonna take that from you, right? Um, what you're saying about Jay is definitely a nut hang, because that's the same like monster that you're going against, yeah. right? But at the same time, it's just like, bro, I need more people in that position of power to let their nuts hang. Yeah. Yeah, he basically like, said, "Nigga, I like my company don't need your stamp no, no. of anything, nigga. No, I run, no. I run More the so music you game. You need me because I got several NFL stars on my mm-hmm. roster that you gonna want to do a PA. Yep. You gonna want to come and kiss these kids and babies over here at the motherfucking Make a Wish Foundation and yep. do all the shit that they don't you get have paid to deal for. With me, you nigga. gotta deal with me, nigga. In renegotiations and nation, shit. Yeah, nigga. like we not, mm-mm. we're not doing that. So." People just gotta understand that, like it's a, it's a new day. When it comes to to certain things, especially when you start talking about like the whole FBA culture, um, I'm looking at some of these young kids and shit like that, and it's just the way they moving, bro. The world of entrepreneurship and and the way these young people's minds are working in terms of like economics and stuff like that, I think the worst thing they ever did was not was strip that from our education, purposely. And try to hide traditional education of uh, economics to a certain race of people, because it made us to be like not conformed by it. We all think out of the box, because the box wasn't for us. We don't fit in the box. That nigga Russ said it the best. He said they pay you to forget your dreams and call it a salary, nigga. Dog, that's that's why I fuck with Russ. Pay you to forget Get your, your dreams, dreams and call, call it a salary, salary nigga. And how many motherfuckers have we seen, though, get the, I'm talking about the riches, right, that we want. Mm-hmm. Whatever level it is, whatever level of comfort you try, you dreamt of as a child. If it was just buying your parents a house and, you know, having a little spot for you and being able to, nigga, get the little things, ancillary things you want whenever you want them. Most people don't, don't want to be billionaires, right. right? But let's say whatever that is, how many people do you see that reached that pinnacle, that went the traditional school, I'm gonna go to the school, I'm gonna go take out these loans, get a student loan, do this, Most woo-woo, get out there. Barely finished versus, high school. And I'm not even talking about billionaires, but that's a good point, because that goes with what I'm saying. But versus the person that you see that has the comfort, the wiggle room, the access to certain funds, and the, the overall protection 
a lot of them motherfuckers didn't go to college. Yeah, because they were smart or a lot enough, of them. Even they were smart they enough college, to build their credit. They're self employed. Build their credit and not go into debt. They're self employed. Who the fuck? Who the fuck? Why do we need to keep going into fucking debt? I just feel like. Americans are are archaic in why their thinking is, of, of education. Anyway, why is debt top three household bills in every household? Well, why is education a bill? Period. I mean, you can't put so much on education. Hey, hold on, though. No. Hold on. And then not speaking of make black, it affordable for most black education. Shout out to whoever was driving the fam uh, the FAMU car. In the NASCAR, I went to NASCAR race yesterday. That shit was dope. Somebody's driving the um, FAMU HSBC sponsored car. Oh, okay. All black and green, nigga. That's it's clean up. as fuck. How they do? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I know it's a lot to catch up. Keep up. You see what I'm talking about? Like, I was wa- I was watching. On. I was trying to watch what Bubba Wallace was doing. Jordan's so cold. <clears throat> Jordan's got two cars. Guess what the numbers are? Twenty three and uh, was it? It's not nine, is it? Forty five. Forty five. <laughs> shit, yeah. I should have known that. I thought it was this other number. I thought, I thought he was gonna be a little more creative. No, no, like, no. twenty three and forty five. <laughs> so here's how I put it together. If I was him, I'd have went fourteen so I and didn't nine. No, I didn't. I thought it was just Bubba Wallace signed to twenty three eleven, right? Mm-hmm. So they're, they're driving. The other teammate ends yeah. up right in front of Bubba Wallace. So I'm looking, and there, he's got the Jordan sign on his car. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. So I don't, 23, 4, I'm like, let me Google this. Watch this be the Jordan. It's got to yeah, be. It's too. Team Jordan. I was like, yep, sure is. That's, of I know, course, um, it's 23 and 45. That boy Floyd just got one, too, now. It is announced that Floyd just bought a team. It's g- good because we should get into that shit. It's, it's starting to die off to the point where they're going to let us in. Well, yeah, because you can't fly the Confederate flags and you got a lot of people that are boycotting. But it's still a big sport. It, it, they don't really. No, they, I'm they, not they're not. It. They don't need us. Nigga. Don't get it twisted. Off. Yeah, no, no. They don't need us. But Shit, they're starting to get more inclusive is what they're trying to do. Watch, you know what I'm saying? Watch how we change. We would change the game. Bro, I'm going to tell you right now. I know at least 30 niggas in Oakland right now that could be a NASCAR driver. For sure. Just facts. It's about a hundred niggas in Newark, New Jersey, right now that could be. NASCAR it just takes drivers, a bro. lot of money to become. That's a it. NASCAR it's just like driver. golf and shit like that, or tennis. To be driving, oh yeah, especially you just need like tennis. You bro. just need to like to be funds. doing tennis from fucking five, six years old. But it's nigga, motocross. You gotta have bread. It's just like all the, a lot of those yeah. like sports, bro. Like yeah. exotic sports are expensive. They are. They're for somewhat of the elite. Like, mm-hmm. nigga, you, what's those sports? Because uh, you got to be sailing and shit. Like yeah. sailing and shit. Yeah, you got to every race. You got to take a couple bikes. Yeah, because engines blow up. All Some, type of shit. Yeah, you got to be able to take a couple bikes to every race, nigga. That's bread. Or sponsorship. Yeah. Engines, nigga. Right. You got to have yeah, hella engines on standby. And that's really the main thing. No, no, I'm talking about young racing. I'm not talking about now. I'm no, talking about when too. you're doing like me five too. and six year old. Yeah, no, me too. Nigga, that shit has got to uh, be. Uh, rest in peace, man. God bless the dead. My boy, Freddie Rikers. Um, I think it was, was the shit, dog. He got, he got murdered uh, really like the day before his first pro meet. But he was already like. See, pro is, is is a funny word because it was big time pro, like, but he, he had to deal with Fox and all that. He was a shit. Nigga, I used to be at school foxed up. Mm-hmm. But he um he made a lot of money amateur wise. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They could still do sponsorships. And yeah. So he was sponsored relatively early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, boy. It's crazy. I think about that sometimes. You know it's crazy. So, <clears throat> I was thinking about this um, this girl like Kirsten, right? We, we were talking, we were talking for a minute, and we went on like one date, right? Mm-hmm. So she was a recovering heroin addict and everything. She went missing. Man, we're just gonna put her out there like that. She went missing. I'm gonna tell you, it all makes sense in a second. She went missing. Um, for like five days, ended up finding her in her truck. And she had passed away. From a, uh, um, relapse, she overdosed on purpose. So she ended up. She was six months clean out of drug court and everything. She ended up relapsing, and she was so embarrassed about it. She didn't face nobody. So 
And she left a note, and she basically in the note said, there's nothing anybody could have said. There's no way to round this. Like, See, that's the stigma that we do, um, that we put on people, man. And the weird thing is, I don't know why I was thinking about her. It, well, the anniversary was March 1st. Damn. It was so self-consciously. March it was 1st. Uh, she did it in 2017, so March 1st. It was five years. Yeah, it was, it was like one of them, self-conscious mm -hmm. type. And I remember, like, getting hit up, like, have you heard from, because they knew I had talked to her or was talking to her. So I was like, nah, I haven't talked to her in, like, it's been a few days. Same amount of time they haven't talked to her. She found Shit. her out of wall park, bro, in the back of her car. Damn, out of wall? Mm -hmm. It's just crazy, bro. Yeah, man. I, it's crazy that we still criminalize that. Right. You know, like, had the, God bless her, had they saved her and got to her, she'd have been going to jail and shit. They'd have been trying to put her in jail, you know. Um, some people don't understand how circumstance and trauma can dictate choices. For real. Some people, like, if they have an experience, they're just like, oh, well, you don't do drugs. Cause she was, That's the whole Nancy Reagan said, nigga, just say no. She was like, even I could tell when he was kicking it, she was it kicked it. She was really like, had a job, was really flourishing yeah, she, and shit, That's what bro. you call a functioning addict. And right? um, That's what they call it. She clinically. relapsed six months. Functioning, a like, functioning addict. Like a couple weeks later, she relapsed after being six months sober. Yeah, man, that's devastating. You know, because. Um, so on her 21st birthday is when they found her, bro. You know what's crazy? Uh, my boy, you know, I, I have a few people that, that have committed suicide. Um, and one of my friends, close friends, when his little brother committed suicide, one of the things he used to always tell me is like, it's just, man, it's kind of selfish, bro. He said, because you just leave your loved ones with like a bunch of fucked up questions. That ain't nobody ever gonna be able to answer. Um, some people, you there's really just some people you can't. No, because mental illness is stigmatized. Yeah, it's weaponized. Um, look it's at Rob, overlooked. Look at fucking Robin Williams, bro. It's overlooked. Millionaire. Right? I was about to say that. Make look people at, uh, laugh every day. You would think Regi Regina King's son, right? Regina King's son, bro. You wouldn't know these people had any type of like thing. There, his daughter did. His daughter's one of the Robert Williams daughter's one of the only people that knew he was in the state that he was in. But what could you do about it? The person that made so many people laugh, fucking one of the greatest comedians. Yeah, those are the people that understand pain though. Mm -hmm. Like even musicians get it, it, all artists can get caught up into that. Right. <clears throat> in any art form, bro, like you can get consumed in the art, um, and, and offer yourself a little too much, bro, where it just It'd take you to a dark place. That was hell because sad when Robin Williams died, bro. Because it takes you, it takes you to, a, it takes you to a dark place, bro. Like to me, I wasn't. I felt relief for him, right? Because they say people, he had a disease too. Some I, people I, I, are like trapped. He, in he was their, like um, beginning stages, like Alzheimer's or something. He some had people something are trapped really, in their offerings, really affecting him. Yeah, some people are trapped in their offerings. And I think that a person like a Robin Williams, think about him going through Alzheimer's. If you've ever been around it, it's a very sad, it is. emotional it's a thing. Brutal ass and it's a, a, a constant ass. reminder of how frickle and thin this thing called like sanity is. Mm -hmm. And how like your memory and everything that you take for granted over the course of your life. But what you forget is you put a million files of data in your head every day. Right. And that's still in there. So when you have an Alzheimer's or something and that's those things aren't getting filtered. But when I was younger, my granny used to uh take care of a, a friend of hers that her name's Dean. Gazillionaire. Right. But her family didn't want to deal with her because she had Alzheimer's and she was old. So they just basically retired an older lady that knew her and did well with her. Yeah. That cared enough to like just be with, be with her, her every, every day. day, right? Yeah, we just gonna buy you a car every year, mm. upgrade your car every year, get you a house, and pay you this much. And I remember Granny was so 
they're both gone now. But I remember Granny was heartbroken over that shit. Yeah, it's fucked She up. would always, she held it down, but every time she would talk to me about it, and I was younger, like, you know, we come from a culture where grown-ups don't. But talk that's too much that. About that's kids, that. Like, that's I that. Picked up on that. Like, that's that damn. rich people shit, though. People be rich that's, and just don't give a fuck about. So their and family that's the thing. But, but she controls all this money. So every once in a while they pop up. Well, we need this sign. We need this. Woo, 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 all these type of things. Um, they would, sh- you know, come see her. Just like, oh, she's alive. She's good. Like, hey, how you doing? But after not being around for a few years, on a consistent basis, she ain't know them. Right. At all. And she will go like, I could be sitting there out of high school chilling or eating to go to practice, eating a sandwich or something, and I could chop it up with Dean. Like, oh, how you doing, Miss Dean? Mama Dean, what you doing? It's an old white lady, bro. She's from a time where it pro- I'm not, it's easy to look at all old white people and say that they used to be racist, <laughs> right? That ain't fair. Right. So I'm not saying that. But she comes. Well, she from was in the time when a lot of people were some real racist shit racist, going on, right. and she from the time she got all this money. So it's been a couple times where, like, I come out of the room with something at my granny's house. I'm just chilling, and she gets startled. Like, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, she ain't, I'm young. I don't even realize what she's going through, bro. It's always was funny to us. Like, Dane, it's me. I just gave you a sound like calm down like you know because she was older and it was just that the slippage of her mind but dog she had all her damn near other than that all her faculties was in order like she wasn't she get up move around good she used to come to my high school basketball games mm-hmm. like nigga, like I had high school friends and people that knew me from school that loved that came to like oh that's Miss Dean. Like, they would come sit with her. And, you know, like, they would ask if they can walk her to the bathroom, all type of shit. And it was funny because she would be kind of fitted because she was rich. Right. <laughs> My nigga, don't get it twisted, nigga. She coming to the game, nigga, minked up. Nigga, like, got some big diamonds on and shit, like, chilling. And I always thought about that, bro. Like, if you're wealthy, you got time to be with her every day. Yeah. That's what I don't get. You got nothing but time. I would just be chilling with my dudes. Thought we if would be taking trips mother- around the world, nigga. Bro. Doing the most. I'll get a camera you would never, You would never forget me. Be a, nigga, it'd be a show. Right. Like, nigga, we would be doing the most. Like, wait, mom's got Alzheimer's. Oh, we about to do a whole bunch of a shit that she's going to forget then. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we then we going to take through. pictures, right? it right. down. All like, that type nigga. of shit. Fuck it then We finna go Do them all We rich too yeah, We gonna go throw some money On these strippers ma You ain't gonna remember Fuck it You know what I'm saying Who knows How are you a hooker ma All that Whatever you need <laughs> Shit That ain't fair gonna do the most. Hey bro I think that might be One of the most cruelest things That nature can do That's to a person. white people White wealthy people No I'm not talking about that mentality. I'm talking about the, the Alzheimer's disease in itself Oh yeah it's cruel You know what I'm saying To make somebody forget But I will everything. say Maybe I don't know because I don't really hear that about a, about a lot of people in our culture. Like I'm not gonna lie, I I really don't hear about people putting away older folks like that because that's just not something we do culturally. Think about how many households you've been in where grandma's been there. It's the matriarch. Grandpa been there. Yeah. Or grandma and grandpa are still together in their house, and the grandkids still go over there. You still go over there to check on and make sure everything good. They Dinner's chilling. still over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Grandma and grandpa might live in separate houses. Yeah, but it's still, yeah, it don't matter. Right. Like, nah, that's not a, that's a, that's a white culture thing. When you go to most nursing homes, they're filled with what? I mean, shit, I ain't never really been to a nursing home. Oh, white people. But on TV, it's usually just a whole bunch of white people in there. It's not in our, it's not in. And what's crazy. Think about. You think can't about, really be broke and be in a nurse. But, but think you? about, but think about all cultures. Think about all cultures you've even oh, seen you on TV can. and you've seen in TV and you've seen them on well, in their natural the name habitats it, and shit. But look it's at, like. Confu- look at most black people. We're very family oriented. Right. Oriental people, Asian people are some of the most well, family oriented. I was oriented. about to speak on that. It was a Confucianism or. Well, I'm um, not sure if that's the name of it. But Latin, it's a, Latin people. It's a certain type of nigga, culture. Latin people will have granny around you know, no, forever. It's a name for it, though. Yeah. It's a certain type of culture to where, like, it's how you play. I'm sounding ignorant as fuck, but it's how you play 
on the elders. Yeah, we don't versus the youth and your family. There's a word we for champion it. it our, might not be yeah, we we but. we champion our elders. Yeah. We look at our elders for what they are. But you know what's crazy? There are there's I mean, I guess there's anomalies to everything cuz there are some there white are, people that's like that. Right. But I, but I just, just want to say that I'm to be just fair. Saying, yeah, it but, ain't all white but people, but I'm saying you But culturally, uh, yes. you're right. That is something that they're more to pawn them off to do something else and just be gone living their life. Do you think it comes from nanny culture? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Absolutely. That might help. That might have something to do with it. Because look at it like this. Because niggas don't if I just. I grew up rich. Most black people on, don't just this. drop people off with random babies. If I grew up shit. rich. Right. You're right about that. We give them the family. If I grew up rich, though. Big ass estate. Mm -hmm. Big ball and jet. I'm little Blue Ivy, nigga. I'm Blue Ivy Carter. But moms and them is always pawning me on some nanny team. I'm not on the Jets with. See, you see the pictures. They got their babies with them. With them the but right, but I'm not seeing that. You just see me just nanny up, like how how Kanye was Look accusing at Kim, Kim and Kanye. How Kanye was saying Kim right. was doing with the kids, right? Versus how he we treated. We used to them. see Kanye with his kids all right. the time because so, that's what he made happen. So peep this now. Forty, thirty years later, I'm I'm running the but the, the the finances, nigga. I'm. Kim's going to be in a home and Kanye's going to be getting taken care I'm of. I'm just by his saying, kids. like, if you think about the evolution of it, it's just like, if you come from that culture where you like, Ugh, get this baby away from me. I feel like, right? oh, no, absolutely. Kim be, will it, be in a I'm home. Just, I'm, not even, that's, 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 I'm not even trying not to personalize home, it. Kim ain't going to no, Hear yeah. me out. I'm not personalizing it to them. Right. I'm saying the culture that you speak of, right? Mm hmm. If it's nanny culture up here, mm -hmm. and it's excessive nanny, not that you got some help because we got a big ass no, estate, they, but excessive. they change all the diapers, right. they feed you, they right. teach you and take you to school. They're they, the parents. They're parenting you while I'm they're jet setting you. and taking pictures and doing all that right. shit, right? Hey fam, it's a lot easier in 30 years, 40 years, however long, to be like, oh, come on, you can't wipe your own ass? We need to get you some help. Well, mom, I've got. I found a nice place for you, and this is so and so. She's gonna take care of you. Call me. I'll bring the kids by on the weekends. If you think of it like that, I only I only thought that just because when you said what you said, mm -hmm. it made me think of it a little different. It was like, oh, from that perspective, that's not as harsh as if it was a nigga. If you did that to one of your parents, you ain't shit. Not at all. You see what I just went through. I'm just saying, but my dad didn't go to hospice. But you see dad. what we what we go through parentally and like. But no, I firmly, I firmly believe in that situation. You just broke down. My Kim being mom, mom, mommy can't wipe your ass. Cool, dad, you can't wipe your ass. Well, we gonna take care of you. Yeah, I'm moving you in over here. Yep. A I'm smaller see place. You every motherfucking day. Here's your chef. Here's your uh. This is this is so and so. She's yeah. gonna take care of the house. Anything you need, they'll let you know. I will come by right. every morning. Come check on you. See how you doing. Take you to your doctor's appointments. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And that's art. Honestly, bro. No, this is so and so. She's gonna come by. This is my assistant. She's gonna come by and check on you and make sure everything's good. Mm -hmm. And you have my number if you need to call me. Bro, this is where they fuck up family wise when they do that. Shit, if I was rich, I'm having nigga, I'm having dinner in my my every night, nigga. No matter where I'm at. Bro, I'm a I'm a Kanye West that thing. I think mom's just gonna be in the back of the jet somewhere doing what moms yeah, do. Where the fuck I'm at, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like how Pops used to be, God bless him, like, he ain't worried about what the fuck we doing. Nigga, Pops over there doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. We gotta call hey Pops, what you think about it? he like, huh? Like, oh man, what y'all talking about? I ain't even worried about y'all. So, that's what it's supposed to be. You feel me? That's just crazy to me, dog. Like, yeah, I never think of putting either. I would never put either one of my parents in a home. Yeah, because if you got the money to put them in a the home, you have the money to take. You can take of care of them, bro. Right. That's the only thing. Even about not that. even being their main caregiver, That's they the could live it. in your big ass mansion. You have a caregiver there now, for them. You get to see them every fucking day. Somebody's taking care of them when you're not there. You don't even have to take care of them when you're there. You just got to spend time with them. I understand if they have certain type medical needs that keeping them alive is predicated on you having them in this facility. Right. That's a difference. It's a totally different thing. I'm taking that off the board. Yeah, that's way you know different. I mean? 
I'm just talking because I'm even talking about niggas that ain't millionaires. That's a couple hundred thousand heirs that got a nice house. And, I'm, we're talking. You know, all that. We're talking Miss D right now. I'm talking, if you we're talking afford, her in that situation, right? Yeah, like if you where she's got all her shit. faculties about her still. Nobody even has to take care of her, but you're gonna have somebody there to. But you don't go see them at all, and you have nothing but time. Make no sense. Yeah, no, that's facts. You kind of cold blooded at fuck, that point, bro. Like, cause that's a prime situation. She doesn't have to be in any type of facility to take care of her. Right. She just needs somebody with her. Right. Like, nigga, you can't have her live with you and have somebody take care of her every day and go right. home at night when you're at home. One of your staff. Like you fucking retard. Like that's just straight. This bullshit. See, man. when you got bread, now you're talking about like, oh, I'm gonna just build you a little spot right there. Or I'm gonna, you got this wing of the house. Yeah, I live in a fucking big ass. 35,000 square foot house 15,000 of it's yours somewhere Yeah I think American culture Needs to kind of like Normalize that some Cause we've gotten off that But like No it's not even American culture Because we're part of American culture And we don't do that No you facts uh, Hey I appreciate that correction My brother You know what I'm saying Mexican Americans, Latino, or whatever they get classified as now. I don't mean as disrespect to my brown brothers. Don't get it twisted, but they try to reclassify us all the fucking time. Yeah, for real. Um, y'all don't do that. Asians don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a cultural For the most thing. part. I forgot it's, what culture it was, and I'm not going to try to sound over intelligent and like name it, but because I, I really can't remember. But I thought it was Confucianism. I ain't going to lie, but whatever. <laughs> it's where... Man, child, you know, child is raised mm -hmm. to adulthood, right? By mother and father, ideally. Mother and father get to a certain, no, child gets to a certain point where they're like, they can afford their own household. The moment, I think they give it like a, you know, maybe a year or so after wedding, after like childbirth and wedding or something like that. But once you and your wife have a kid and you know, we give y'all a little warm up time, you got all the time while y'all single. I believe. But once y'all get like married, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's after you have a kid the parents move in. Or it might be before you have a kid that the parents move in. They just move in right when you get married. Mm -hmm. But literally dead ass, you and Tori about to get married and nigga, her mom and dad's moving in. So y'all moving in your new marriage house, newlyweds, high five, but mom and dad, how y'all like y'all room? Like, because the whole thing is they took care of you. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to take care of them. And they're going to offer. See, it's another thing. When I have somebody break it down that comes from that culture, he was like, don't say it so black and white. He was like, because now you don't have to worry about child care either. You got the village. You got the village, bro. Yep. Wifey's working and she's trying to get that promotion. Everybody, Nobody's suffering at dinner. Because think about it. Say, say Mom's I get, is there. Say I get famous, right? I'm touring the country and everything. Tori's working. If mom lives with me and is watching... <clears throat> Jalen, right. like that's that's the village. No, nah, facts. You know what I'm saying, fam. But let's take it down a notch, because theirs is just culturally. It's not yeah. predicated on fame or celebrity right. or, or wealth. It's well, literally the village. It's is literally, here. nigga. You got a job at the power plant, nigga. I'm a teacher. Uh, our mom and dad, they're retired. They getting a little whatever they get, and they can contribute to the house in every ways they feel right. comfortable. Right. They still living their life. They living. Right. They, they've been waiting to get to this more. It's like they retirement. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the baby's up. Yep. And I got to go to work. So the, the grandma's getting up with the baby. Grandpa help him do this. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? We yeah, need you got the, just you got all the, the little type of house. shits. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, got the village. We got the village. I like that, man. So uh, to everyone listening to my voice, man, concentrate on the village. Mm -hmm. If you take anything from tonight's episode, focus on your village, That it man. takes a village to raise and do this family shit, that's just real as fuck. It takes a village to build a nation, man. You need a village to become a city, you know what I'm saying? Become a town, all that type of shit. You you need a village. It starts with you and because nigga, I, you. nigga, my village ain't here. He's part of my village. Nigga. Right. If I need somebody to watch Jalen for me, nigga, he's who I have here. That's facts. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't trust any random fucking person. I won't go nowhere. Like nigga, I'll stand. I'll be a house yeah, body. That, that's ass, the that's the debtor. Like oh no, nah. that's a dub. Can't do it. <laughs> I don't right like. Can't do that yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, the village is not just your family. The village is every person around your kids. Is That's, the yeah, they got to be a part of the village, bro. Make them part of the village. Um, 
Yeah, man. Do business with the village. What else we got? Hey, but on that uh, slaughter shit, one thing that I did think that was kind of foul, they took the logo. That's what I thought Knowing was some bullshit. Joe Don't you ever. Knowing Joe and them have 25% each in but the logo. But it doesn't, that shit they don't matter. They take the matter. logo, they flip it, you're killing the motherfucking pig, That's nigga. Bullshit. And then you name the album Kill The Rise it. and Fall Rise, of Slaughter. Right. Like, now, I love bars, and I like both of those gentlemen's uh, music, so I do want to listen to it. But I kind of feel why bad are you listening trying to, to it. Why are you trying to kill it when you want, to, want it to happen? Well, you though? want us to listen to it. Like, y'all motherfuckers. Royce had a good point. He was like, fam, how am I going to, what if I decide tomorrow I got a dope idea. One of my fans hit me with a dope idea about a t-shirt. And I'm like, oh, that shirt is dope. We should sell that. I'm going to put it on my website. And I make a slaughterhouse. Now, y'all going to get 25% of it, right? But what, how, can I go sell a t-shirt now? How can I go push anything Slaughterhouse? And what Royce and Joe is smart enough to realize, and they might not, and I don't want to say smart enough to, to insinuate that the other two brothers was not, or that, that uh, uh, Joel and um, Crook ain't. But what I'm saying is this. Because I think their situation, they might have the foresight or the vantage point, I should say, to, to be able to see, like, yo, the people want this. We that Like Joe said, they was like, nigga, or Joel was like, we've been off the label for a year. And Joe was just like, exactly. We've only been off the label for a year. Like, why y'all couldn't, what, what, what's going on? What's this whole rush to get this bullshit ass back? And so what, what, what I took from that is, and when I heard Roy speak, they understood what you were speaking about. Fam, these niggas is out selling Eminem on a head, head to head right now if they drop the record. Because the fan base, was starved. There's a storyline behind it. Y'all kind of was looking like the underdogs because y'all had kind of got done wrong by the industry. You and niggas the, is and like the Tribe label. Called Quest and Outcast right now. So what happened is, it's like, yo, let's chill. Super groups don't happen Look, a lot. We can chill. I'm listening to what Roy said on the live. He's like, I mean, we could chill. What if we want to just put some dope ass hoodies out for a minute? Get our memorabilia up, nigga. You see what Griselda is doing? And turn that shit into a million dollar business. But what if we, nigga, you wouldn't wear no slaughter shit? It represents something. Right? Here's, a dope ass hoodie or something? Come I on, see fam. your side of it, but do you know where I think. You gotta wait. Crooked in them Let that side. Thing of it. Breathe a little bit. Do you know why I think. Make it exclusive. Do you know why I think they're so gung ho about it? They needed it more. Yeah, and not even that. Oh. It's the jealousy of Joe. Royce mm. don't have that jealousy towards Joe. Joe's That's bag. Fact is making these niggas feel like I want part of that bag. Right. But that bag ain't even music. No, that no. bag is fucking a podcast. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Granted, he got, he got and the notoriety something that from Being a person music, that's listening to that podcast like since gotta, his inception, damn near. You got to fucking, he, you got to you you separate, to, you got to separate the bags because they even fuck if with it. you niggas was touring right now and you niggas had been releasing albums this whole time, you couldn't touch his podcast bag anyway. He would still be up more than you. Niggas got to get out their fucking feelings, bro. Like, put your Niggas fucking stop ego pocket aside, watching. bro. Period, bro. That's what Rory and Maul did. You know why? Because you right, dog. Because I can't Niggas get over. Like you know what? I can't get over one thing that Maul said. Because we're, I, it's like me and Remember you. Remember when he started bringing up his hats? Yeah. No, this is what it is. It'll be like, we sitting here. We get a deal, right? And for whatever reason, nigga, let's say, nigga, I... In this, for our story, let's just say, like, I, you was better off with your money, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like the Fetty Wap situation. Or not even no, no, like that. Let me, let me lay I, my plane. I, let me lay my plane. It, I'm, I'm going to make sense. It's like, the remember the Fetty Wap argument with mm -hmm. his manager? They did the both interviews, and the manager was like, we both got 25 mil. Mm -hmm. Why am I up right now, nigga? Because I invested in this. I did this, and everything I was about to invest in, I was like, yo, I we should buy this. Know. We should do this. Yo, hey, dog, stop buying so many cars. He's like, this nigga has 46 cars. Yeah. But now that when you look back, and you only got about $3 million and you owe six to the IRS, and you get downsizing and none of these labels is offering you a real bag and you didn't said fuck me and I'm the one that made you a millionaire and I'm telling you like bro just keep it like just do what you got to do and, and and say what you got to say and let's come home and let's get it right I still got relationships with some of these labels you fucked off you go you got pride and you looking at it like I might have did something dirty maybe because I was the talent and I wrote all the songs how did you get so rich right. like nigga I, you was there when I got the, we got the same split 
Or it's like if this podcast blows up and my music blows up and you then get jealous and feel like you should be part of my music bag. Let's do it like this. It's separate. I'm going to give you an example of what it is because we both do separate entities, right? We all have other things going on. It's a perfect example. Say, nigga, you sell like a couple tracks, nigga, that that take you to the top, take you over the top. Mm -hmm. Now you buzzing. Remember, you're not... You're not Dre yet. You're not the big dog. Right. But you just. But I got a name. You buzzing. Right. And now I got to sit here and watch you buzz, right? So remember, Joe got, and I've heard him, or I can pull up the episodes where he's telling Maul, like, Nick, I think you should do like a, a show. Like, what kind of show can we do for you? And Maul is being cool as fuck. Like, and he's curving all that shit. And he was like, nigga, we can at least do like a fashion show with you. He's like, I'm hot right now, nigga. They giving me shows. Just jealous of like you're jealous, but no, it's coming from the next. It's complacency, dog. Uh-huh. You, we've already be, you became. I made you a millionaire on a B mic. Rory and Maul had the highest salary of any B mic in the country. Right. You're making more than the Breakfast Club. You're making more than Hot Nine Seven. You're making more than all these niggas. The only nigga making more than you is Joe. Twice a week. But that's the problem. No, not right? Joe Budden, Joe Rogan. Right. No, right. Yeah, yeah. More well, than the whole but pod. he's not a B Mike though. Like, so that makes sense. But I'm talking about like No, I'm talking about I was putting it as a whole pod. The only right. thing no, right. better was you okay. was Joe. So I'm not gonna split it. You're right. So when you hear that, now nah, we don't know that business. Okay, we get all that. But just from the ancillary things that we can see, the surface level things, the things that's just out there, public concern, it's like, okay, well, they keep saying that they were arguing over a percentage. And they're just like, oh, well, the percentage uh, didn't match up. And my whole thing is this, bro. You know you don't own that. Right. And and the nigga, made, y'all made millions of dollars together. Hey, bro. Hey, this year, at the end of this year, we need to renegotiate. Rene- yeah, just revamp the contract. Or, hey, bro, you right. Maybe I do need to add some more streams to my shit. Because even though you're the one that was famous... Even though you're the one that funded the the birth and the and the survival of this podcast, which yeah. they all admitted, so you yeah. paid all until y'all got a bag, you paid, you paid for, for everything, yeah. right? You the one that booked the tours and shit like that and set it up so we can get money. Your name is what's bringing the advertisement dollars that we can get a little check here and there, right? All these things are happening not because strictly the podcast, really because your name and the pie. It's like a combination, right? Fam, just go do another show. Go do um, the Maul's world or go do this, go do that. Start doing other things. Like, because I heard Joe saying that shit on the mic, chastising these niggas about that shit. Like, all right, y'all niggas don't want to do nothing. And now in hindsight, I'm hearing them different. He's like, bruh, all right? Because I'm not going to go and work for fucking, uh, I created a show called The Pull Up. Nigga, me, and this is the thing. This is the thing about uh, Parks. Parks is the sound video, audio visual guy. So when Joe got an idea, who do you think he's calling? Parks. And Parks could be like, nah, nigga, I'll make millions of dollars doing the pod, bro. I'm already nah, doing that. This I already do this. Parks is a grinder, too, nigga. Yeah. He's an artist, a creator. He jumps out of bed, nigga. All right, well, you want to go interview this nigga? All right, bet. Because what he realized is podcasting is podcasting. And really, you got to be really selective with the people you bring on your podcast as an interview. They need to be able to fit the pocket of the podcast. Otherwise, it's awkward. And why would I just not go watch any other thing? I go listen to radio Right For this You know what I'm saying If they can't kick it During a podcast Hit some weed Talk about some shit Nigga what's your opinion On Melinda Gates nigga We ain't just here Talking about you And what you doing What you doing what... <laughs> You know what I'm saying Right And if you notice That's kind of how they do it But With the sponsorship Starting to come in And the money And the relationships It's like yo Well we just paid you This much money man We want this one Alright we're on trip I created another show Called The Pull Up I'll talk to all the motherfuckers Y'all want to talk to Oh, Puff is fucking with me. Right. I got a show. I heard the nigga. Like, bro, what y'all, you know, they don't want to do it. Nigga, Rory was doing his own thing. He's like, I'm trying to manage now. I got this. I got, I got, uh, do say Palooza. Nigga, and, and Ma was doing his own thing, allegedly. Like, I got other stuff I'm doing. I'm busy. And he would always say it. He'd be like, man, you, you, you get on here and you act like I don't got other things going on. Right. You know, and so it's like, okay, y'all all eating. So. Well, okay, that's like. Prime example, this will fit us so well. All them times you hit me to go out. What? Say something bubbled out of that, right? I couldn't be mad. 
That's like, but that's like me being mad that I'm not. You you put it out there, hey nigga, we're doing this such and such here. Show I show you can come here and bubble real quick. Come here and, and you get don't go. Name. I can't be. You mad like at Keem, you. I ain't tripping, bro. I can't be mad at Hold you. Hold it down. I ain't if, fucking with. I can't mad at you if you got a bag. If you and if you got a bag for the show, but your bag was bigger at the time because of what you did. Or. I if, guess what, nigga? That. Guess what? I just poked through and got a pause and got us a good relationship. We in the building, but they want me to do this little show. I got to do this show for them so I can prove my worth. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to bring you in on the show occasionally. I'm going to wear our little apparel and push our shit, and I'm going to remind the world that on that show that we got our own podcast and all that, but it's really the, for the next play. Yep. Now, you can sit back on one or two things, like especially when you're just like, nigga, I know I could have been there. And then it could have been a two-way street. Or you could have the foresight to say, me being there might have not made them offer. Right. Because now you got a duo here. Mm -hmm. You know we got our own pod. We talking this shit. And now you're going to offer Dre a spot on another show? Yeah. Nigga, that, that, that ain't comfortable. Business, right? Even if you looking at Dre like, damn, Dre would be perfect for this shit. Him and Kim doing their thing, it, it coincides perfect. But man, that can actually even help him in Akeem if Drake goes does does this show, mm -hmm. bro. I gotta be I gotta understand, nigga. I don't I can't do shit with two turntables, dude. Right. I don't make beats. What I'm gonna get mad because they want you to uh, put, we we sign with a a, a a a company and then they realize like, hey man, can you produce uh these commercials for us? We want to do some audio, and they pay you a a nice bag. So now you pull up, you extra shot, you got a little something extra mm -hmm. that I ain't got. What I'm supposed to say, Nick, because we in the same, maybe I'll need something too. <laughs> right. Bro, come on. But it comes down to this. Hey, fam, this shit go on basketball teams. Yeah. Fuck you mean that nigga make 40? I average 19, he average 17. Yeah, he two years younger than me, but. Fuck does that mean? But right. Nigga, <laughs> I'm averaging 19, he averaging fucking 17. We like, restructure at the end of the year. Nigga, I play 82 games this yeah. year. That nigga plays 72. Yeah, we restructure I don't feel right about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this new shit that these niggas do, nigga, my, my, my hamstring hurt. <laughs> you see James Harden hit it twice on these niggas already. That nigga, nigga over my, there in Philly. My hamstring nice. hurt. So if you highlight, see My looking, hamstring hurt, bro. You looking right over there in Philly. Him and I don't know. Looking. That's why they just go ahead and trade you when you start talking like that. They already know what you own. Like, oh, okay. So soon as niggas, so after about a couple of weeks of the hamstring, you gonna get out there, nigga, and say you re-aggravated it or tweak. Now you got a contusion. You got all these shits that we can't prove, nigga. Your back bruising, right? Deep, deep contusion, deep bruising on the bone. Like nigga, fuck out of here. Your shit hurt. Like which is basically you saying when I put pressure on it, I You're feel sore, it, nigga. Huh? Yeah, right. I'm sore, nigga. Speaking of sore, I'm sore as shit right now. Fuck. But yeah, no, I ain't really have nothing else, dog. Uh, it was something I wanted to run by you, but I can't think of it. I can't think of it all. Um, oh yeah, shout out to Dave Chappelle. Shout out to Netflix. Shout out to Earthquake. Go see Dave Chappelle's first joint that he produced, you know what I'm saying, and put out there. It's Earthquake. On Netflix? Netflix. Do yourself a favor, but that should've. Earthquake? Earthquake, it's fam. It's a movie? No earthquake. This the comedian. Earthquake. Oh, that's it. That's David. Special. Oh, I gotta see that. Okay, it's fire. I, I saw it and I'm going to watch it because earthquake's fire. been hilarious since since he being. got his moment finally. I'm glad okay. it's fire. Well, do you know Dave? Give him the power. He gonna give niggas their moment. That's exactly what it's Dave, about. Dave. Dave. Yeah. Is yeah, 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 yeah. Loves all comedians. If you oh, if you're funny, name. you're funny, my nigga. Yeah. So right? he has like a lineup. But instead of doing it before, corny. Before you say that, let me land, let say this one thing. That's one thing I love about Dave is he doesn't have an ego. Nah, if you're yeah, nah. good, you're good unless you attack him first. Yeah, no, nah, he's uh, yeah. He's a cerebral dude, like, man. Um, but then what was I going to say? Because he, uh, he loves comedy so much. Like, he. What was I going to say? The culture's the culture. Damn. Oh my bad. Fuck no, 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 no. It's not that big of a deal. It was loose. It was loose. Either way it goes. Um, it's right there on the tip of my tongue. Basically, I was I was just saying that like um Yeah, Oh, that's what it was. He didn't do it corny. You know how like they be funny. Mm -hmm. Maybe but you know, Shaq presents or 
uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer. Shaq's were funny, though. No, listen, that's what I said. Okay. They were funny. Said, All of them was really yeah, funny. Shaq. Shaq had some funny ones, too. But, but I know what you're saying. The way that he's doing it, mm-hmm. he does a little quick little like monologue in the beginning. It's not even like on no comedy shit. He's just introducing his dude. He does the monologue tell for a little, the, tell a little the backstory. ones he was doing for him, that he had Morgan Freeman doing for him. Something like that. Two. Yeah, yeah, he, he does something similar little, like that, real shit, quick, real yeah. simple. You could tell he dumbed it down like mm-hmm. I'm not the star of this. And he said it gives me a great honor. But when he tells a little backstory between him and Earthquake, and boom, gets right to it, nigga. Earthquake come right on stage, bombing, nigga. I gotta see it. Come right on stage, nigga. I know, dog, and he's still dope, bro. And it's just cool to see him as as this age doing this shit. I'm like, dog, this nigga, Earthquake. That's is the a one fucking beautiful fool. thing about comedy. You can do it you to the day you it. fucking die, bro. The thing is, you if can do that funny, with all funny, things bro. that you love if you stay true to it. If you don't let other people tell you you're too old to rap and right. you're too old to sing, you're too old to be doing music. Shut the fuck up. Mm. I love doing this shit. I'll sit in this room and play my saxophone with a great beard, nigga. What do you mean? All right. B.B. King played till he died. Basketball has an expiration. Yep. Sports. Football has an expiration. All sports definitely right? do. Physical things. like, But other nigga, creation? Mm-mm. Fuck, you gonna tell me I'm too old to paint? I could start being an artist at 65. If my shit dope and it sells, I'm dope. All right. I can go get published, nigga, at... Seventy one, well, yeah, because you gotta think about it. Quincy didn't make his first hit till what he was forty. Come on, till he got his first hit with Michael. So he's already in his fucking forties. Well, I don't, I don't know. That might be true. Now you would know that more than me. But I know that nigga was a star already. I know he had did hella work and shit. Like no, I'm that. talking about like, but like celebrated hit. See, a lot of that shit had to do with race too, though. I think him and Mike kind of like was so they were so dope with that thriller shit that it was like fuck it. Mm-hmm. Get them niggas the award, man. Yeah. Like they they deserve that. Like you know what I mean. The shit was that dope. But this is what it reminds me. I gotta watch that Quincy documentary. I I fell asleep on it twice. It I heard it was really good, but it starts off really slow. And I don't know. But uh, what you got? We can wrap this shit up, man. I want to start playing like some. I want to kind of do, and I know I'm not even on no Biden shit. I've been saying it, but we didn't have the clearance. I want to start. We we need to start ex- exiting out on some on some tunes, nigga. I need to tune you up with something. You know what I'm saying? We need like a always talking shit playlist. That'd be dope. I think we could really make a dope ass playlist too, bro. Mm-hmm. If we really get in our bag, I'm talking about eclectic as fuck. We might have to push that. <laughs> we might have to push that. Well, that's, that's been another episode. That's been another fucking episode of the Always Talking, Talking Shit, Shit Show. Show. I'm your host, Doc Gon. It's your boy, King Magic. We out this bitch. Fuck how you feel. Peace and love. New Always Talking Shit Show. Peace out to the world.